Mm-hmm. Grab a seat. Are you and uh, Sam still together? Yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah. You talk about it? Yeah, I'll talk about it. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. I talked to him before. I was like, I was like, so do you not want me to say anything? He's like, I've talked about you on so much shit. I was like, all right. Um, <sighs> he just dropped his special on YouTube. I know. Fucking Comedy Central hit it out of the park with that one. Yeah. Well, and they, you know, he's posted about this, but like, they, uh, did he shot it himself and then they bought it afterward. But it's best. That's before. the best case scenario. Yeah. He shot it himself. He, they bought it, they aired it, and now they're putting it on YouTube. And I think it had had five hundred thousand views in a day, from what I saw. Yeah, it's up to it's up past that now. Yeah, really. In the first week, I think it's. I haven't checked today, but for I'll the check. first few days we were checking quick. and like texting. I, was, I think Nick? a lot of people were texting. I'm like, two hundred k. Like, <laughs> Sam Morell, you got this. I'm on fucking vision. I I've got five fifty one. Yeah. It's, my vision's just gone to shit. Do you really? feel like, oh my God. Like I, 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 there are times where I am just full on blind with reading. Like I can't see really? a thing. Oh yeah. I Do you have I, glasses? Oh, oh yeah. I got wow. a joke about it too. You want to hear it? Yeah. Um, My wife got me glasses and she, cause she was like, you should, you know, I couldn't see. I, I was, it's what is, I, and this is, I'm diverging from the joke, but it's what I love about my wife is that. She does stuff like that. Like she just said to me, um, I have a problem with one of my back teeth. And she goes, well, we're in Tampa. Do you want to get that fixed? And I was like, oh, yeah. I, I've just been avoiding cold things. Yeah. So that like I'm, I literally said to her, I said, I wonder if I can just, I wonder if I'll just die before I have to, it gets really bad. She was like, are you fucking what? serious? What's up my head? I just go like, what am I going to get a fix? Like you ever look at like, a, like my parents bought a new house. I am all over the fucking map today. <laughs> My parents bought a new house, and I was like, and they're in the seventies, and I was like, why? And my dad's like, well, what do you mean, like, because I can't have anything nice now because I'm gonna die soon? And I was like, well, I don't know. It just seems like a lot. I mean, what? He's still got like twenty years, I don't right? Know about twenty, but yeah, but he's still. <laughs> that's, got a few. I mean, that's the hope. My dad, my dad set things up for, like, he would say things that ma- made you look at life differently. Like he'd go, I got. This is my last car. Oh, oh, so he's a little morbid. Yeah. Yeah. I get, I'm, but I'm morbid. Anyway, my yeah. joke about my son, my glasses. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I'm really all over the fucking map today. We spent a whole, half of my meeting talking about you. I love the beginning of your special. Oh, do you? You know I do. Thank you. You know I do. I don't know. I mean, you oh, the first I line. Do. You, you mean? know I oh. love, I love. Cut to the fucking chase and get me in it. I yes. want to be in it so quick. So <laughs> I thought about you saying that when I was like, all right, how well, am I going to? You were there with me when I was doing Secret yes. Time. And I was so obsessed with it because I so many people would lose me. People I love would lose me in like a like a, a sketch or or but I love the lighting of you backstage taking a sip of water. You look beautiful. Thank the you. music's great. How much did you pay for that? <laughs> Is that? I don't know. Should I talk about how yeah, much I paid for fuck? it? Yeah. I don't know. No. Less? It was cheaper. Yeah, yeah. Did you know the artist? Uh, Yeah, I know somebody who's in the band. Uh, okay. I didn't deal with them directly. but they, And they've been on TV shows, and so the band's Beginners, What's and the they're great. It's, it's, beginner is the name of the band? Beginners is the name of the band. Hey, guys, guess what? You just got your money back right now. Yeah, there you go. Because uh, I'm telling you, it's a cool fucking song. It's a really cool song. Uh, it's called Making Love to the Dead. And I think even that's been on some shows. They were on, um, they've been on like Riverdale a couple times. Like they've, they've were in like a Riverdale, New Balance commercial. Riverdale is the Archie and Jughead. Yes. Yeah. It's that like teen show they made but about the Archie comics. That's so crazy. Yeah. I love when I hear about stuff like that and I go, of course. Yeah. It's hugely popular. Uh, uh, Luke Perry was on it. Yes. Yes. Luke yes. Luke Perry's. Yes family lives lived uh up until i guess when he passed i think things mm. maybe changed for them i'm not certain yeah um but uh he they he they lived right down on the corner right down the block from us oh wow his son's gorgeous i believe it uh, have you ever seen him no he's like a pro wrestler he is fucking ripped long hair i mean this kid was I, he i would do a double take on him when i saw him <laughs> outside gorgeous we almost bought their house Oh wow! Yeah, we were looking for like a podcast studio, and we were like, maybe we'll just buy that house and then have a podcast studio down the street. Yeah, and stay in this house. Yeah, yeah, we almost did it. Wow! When are you going to buy a house? I don't know. 
That's <laughs> Do you think about stuff like that? Yeah, I think about stuff like that. My my thing is like I'd have to know I was going to stay somewhere for a long time and I think I'm still too young to feel that way which is like so funny it's so funny i listen i kind of like scrolled through my last episode i did with you over the summer to make sure i didn't like talk about any of the same stuff um i'm By so way, I'm doing homework i wish i had done that for anything i tell the same <laughs> fucking nine stories <laughs> well i was like i i don't want to tell the same things over and over because i i did do it like six months ago um no but you were in a very different place than today so than, different i mean then you were like a little lost oh my god so lost i was well i my life is so different now and a big doing that podcast that day afterward i talked to you and leanne for like i don't know an hour and a half or something and that was a huge turning point for me i think i broke up with my ex-fiance like a like absolutely definitively like that weekend after i did this podcast because i was like so awesome i did not i was not a fan yeah i know neither was leanne (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> talk to you guys and you're like what are you doing and i remember i don't know if you remember saying this to me but we're sitting we're sitting in your kitchen and you go you go dude you you're gonna have a netflix special your life's gonna be so different you're like you're gonna meet all these people you're like what if you what if you buy a house by the beach and you're just outside in your yard one day and you see this beautiful surfer dude come out of your neighbor's house and he goes hey and you're like oh, i've always wanted to learn to surf and he goes well i'll teach you and then you fall in love and that's what <laughs> and i was like oh my god like i walked out going like i could i could fall in love again like <laughs> as opposed to just like i picked someone and it has to be them and uh it's so funny i told i told sam that story like a couple months into us dating and he's like he's like i know i really like you because i'm jealous of that surfer guy <laughs> that Bert made up <laughs> i was like no you're the surfer guy <laughs> uh but yeah that like I hadn't thought about it that way. I'd been like, so I was in like couples therapy. Like I was trying to make something that oh, should not have worked I'm work. So glad you got out of that. Oh my gosh. And I, I was just like trying to force it. And once I talked to you guys, I was like, it felt like it just opened up like all this like opportunity. I felt like I had potential again. Yeah. Like it was so weird. And I mean, you're just like that as a person. I feel like you make you probably make a lot of people feel that way. Like every time I watch your Instagram stories, you're like the one person I really like watching their Instagram stories. Cause every time I watch it, you're always doing something fun. You always look like you're having a great time. And it always makes me go, I should be living my life. Like (laughs) we should hold. It's like every video you post, it's sunny. Like it doesn't matter where you are. There's always sun and you're just, I'm I'm in the, I'm in the ice bucket and you just, I'm like, that looks great. Like, Oh, we can do it if you want. You, Oh my gosh. You, you could promote literally anything and make it look really fun. I think I'll tell you what, not that, um, not to disqualify that. I'll tell you, there is something about me that, leans leans towards that uh-huh so when i whenever i went scuba diving i would immediately have a panic attack right. I, every time i every time i've gone scuba diving every single fucking time which I've makes gone sense scuba diving. i've never once gone scuba diving i've never once gone scuba diving and it been beautiful weather oh. i've never once gone scuba diving where you're like yeah this seems like a good idea it's either fucking small craft small sea craft advisory a thunderstorm in a steel boat we were in a (sighs) thunderstorm in a steel boat where i was like fuck get me in the water and get me underwater so i don't get struck by lightning i mean i've never everything's always been a rush quick the whale sharks are here now it's never been like a yeah let's uh yeah that's 20 feet (laughs) Clear visibility. (laughs) Hey, let's go check out this reef. Oh, my gosh. It's always been terrifying. And so one of the ways that I've gotten through anxiety is to uh, talk to the camera. Like, when I talk to the camera, my anxiety goes away. I don't know why. So I I would, every time I went scuba diving, I would play to the camera real hard. Yeah. And it would make me forget about it. What I've noticed, this is going to sound like such fucking phony sociopathic horseshit (laughs) but what i notice is that when i feel down if i do an instagram immediately my energy picks up and by the way Uh. i don't like this morning i woke up this morning um i drank way too much yesterday Mm -hmm. like we went to this britney spears thing oh yeah we went to this and then we went to the grove and it was beautiful i was fucking beautiful great weather with, with our best friends the kids are there we're eating French food. I have a couple glasses of rosé. It's like, who doesn't want a glass of rosé in the <laughs> afternoon at the Grove? Fucking great. And then we go over the hill. 
We have, uh, we get another, my buddy hits me up. Hey, I meet you over at Pat's for a cocktail. We go to Pat's. I run into uh, Tone Bell, Omar Dorsey. I have a co- co- cocktails with them. We're catching up. Omar's going to be in New Orleans when I'm on New- in New Orleans. Uh, f- and so he's like, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll party. And I was like, fuck yeah. Come home, open a bottle of wine, start making pasta, kill one bottle of wine, open another bottle. Of- I mean, I drank aggressively yesterday, <laughs> not even realizing I'm doing it. Yeah. Woke up this morning. Uh, not feeling good. Go and get in the sauna. And in a weird way, I just go, come on, let's get out of this. I don't, I didn't even post it. I didn't even post it. Huh. But I go, uh, uh, pre-sale starts right now for my Atlantic City dates, June, July 18th. There's two shows. Use the promo code Birdie Boy. And then I went, oh, I'm feeling better. Oh, wow. It's in a weird way, talking to a camera gets me out of my head. It gets me out of my way. It's interesting because I was going to say maybe it makes you feel that way because you know people are going to watch it and then you're like focused on performing. But you said you didn't even post it, which is, I didn't even post I think it. is interesting. I didn't even post it because I was like, it's it's so crazy. I've always, I've dealt with anxiety pretty well. Did you see what happened with that Jake Paul? Oh, today? I saw that briefly. What did he say? He said something about anxiety? He said, yeah, basically in a nutshell, I think he it's said. It's Logan Paul's brother? Logan Paul. By the way, I kind of am fascinated by both the Paul brothers. I mean, fascinating is a gentle word. For I it. am fascinated. I am. They're like pretty good boxers. By the really? way, I know what I'm saying. People are losing their mind like, Bert, fucking seriously? <laughs> but like, but like, they're really interesting guys when you see when you see that what they've done with their lives. That yeah. they're, they're fucking... Tim Dillon said he could run for president. Like, yeah. And he'd win. Yeah. Because people... He, that's all he's doing on YouTube is getting people to become fans of his. And he doesn't really, no offense to either of the Pauls or any of these guys, they don't really have a talent. Like, yeah, theoretically, your talent would be, I guess, filmmaking. Yeah. But like some of these vlogs, it's like I, I checked out one about this uh, pro skier who um, who travels in yachts. Mm-hmm. And it's, I mean, it's horse shit. Yeah. It's such horse shit. Yeah. I watched 10 episodes. Yeah, you're just an internet personality. People just want to hang out with you. Yeah. That's your talent. People want to hang out with you. By the way, I think I lean into that a little bit mm-hmm. because I go... But you're also talented and funny. Like, man, you also have a skill and a someone, profession. Someone said, uh, someone said in a comment the other day, uh, it is, I'm gonna. what's insane is that I don't think you've gotten the scrutiny yet. Like, I mm. think you're about to with this special. You'll get a scrutiny that once people discover you that aren't fans of yours that's when you start it starts biting right. back yeah, like yeah people discover you and they but they didn't discover you based on them being fans they discover you for some other reason right uh joe list did uh a show shirtless the other day i guess oh did he yeah but i think it was it was the impractical joker he's I think so it was, funny i think it's karaoke karaoke and but it was like it was shirtless so a bunch of people tagged me like yo joe's got his shirt off and i was like oh cool so i reading his comments you know uh-huh. like trying to figure out what it is because he was like some uh, and some guy goes oh wow this is like burt kreischer if he wrote jokes and i went Ugh. and immediately i just went into a fucking spiral oh my gosh like, really yeah, cause I, I think about myself i go am i just some super untalented great promoter oh because that's your per- that's your <laughs> that's biggest m- insecurity yeah. yeah you know what's so funny that here's this is a slightly different example but like because i started so clean and like my family won't like my stuff now. I'm insecure about that. But most of the time I'm like, I've made peace with it. I'm good. But like Joe, uh, I don't know if Joe also works, is on your team also. Joe List? No, no, no. Joe Eschenbach uh, at yeah, UTA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah Joe yeah, came yeah. to watch my new hour uh, in Burbank the other night and said very nice things and was great. And then after I was like, did you watch the trailer for the special? And he's like, yeah, I did. It's great. I was like, what, what did you think? And he goes, I mean, it's very sexual. I'm like, yeah, it's like one joke. I mean, of course, I had to pick one joke. And like, he's like, no, it's great. He's like, it's perfect. You look great. Like, it's great. And I was like, but why would you say that? Like, it's just one thing. They all say he one said, thing. he wasn't even criticizing. He was just like, yeah, it's a, it's, you know, it's a sex joke. Like, it's a sexual, it's very sexual. And I, immediately, I just felt all this like dormant Christian guilt wash over me. Like, I'm a dirty sex comic and I didn't know enough. And I, by the way, all the clips that Netflix initially sent to me as like promo were like, it's like they went through and found every joke that I was talking about sex or said dick in and just well, they, I think clipped they, those all out. I think they know that that immediately sells. Which I totally get. But I'm like, 
we have we can pull like 10 minutes of material from the special to promote i was like and i went through and i picked my own and some of those stayed in there but also i was like okay here's a joke about dating here's a sex joke that i'm proud of and here's some bits that will also go well for older people you know like, yeah, yeah 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 like, here's like some range so it's not just me talking about sex. like you just clipped all of my sex jokes out of it which yeah. probably comes out to like 12 minutes and that's fine but i'm like it's not representative of the whole special oh it's i had a guy review my hour that's going on that that i just recorded for netflix uh, -huh. uh i didn't i did i i glanced over his review but it was he so missed the point of like of like who i am that i was like and that i really was got self-conscious and i was like wait am i misrepresenting myself because oh. i've been i've done that a lot where you say something you don't even realize what you're saying interesting <clears throat> like what what's an example for you i had a dog i had a dog i had a joke about i never told you my glasses joke um oh, yeah. I've, i had a joke about uh my uh I, I still may try to figure this out as a bit i never really did it but when you fall in love when you go out on a date going on a date dating is so archaic and it doesn't work that's not what a relationship looks like mm -hmm. very seldomly do you go out to the movies or go out to eat that's once in a blue moon when you're married oh okay what you should do is you should uh Go out. And, and I, the analogy was that's like going to buy a car, putting your dick in the gas tank. Goes, it fits. I'll take it. <laughs> and you're like, no, that's not what you're using this thing for. Yeah, yeah. You, what you should do is, and this is, by the way, everyone's gonna. I thought this was a funny joke. This did not go over well, but I did <laughs> not know it wasn't going over well. Yeah. I literally thought it was killing. I said, what you should do is you should go out and, as a team, adopt an animal, adopt a dog. Uh huh. One of the dogs are just about to put down. Go in. And you guys should adopt that dog. Then drive out 30 miles outside of the city, kill it together, <laughs> bury it. And then if you can have a casual conversation driving back in the city, then you should start dating. <laughs> By the way, all anyone heard was I was suggesting you should murder dogs. Yeah, I, that's so funny. And I know why it doesn't work. Everyone's like, what? The? I mean, but what I was what I was hearing was. You was, did something fucked up. You went through something traumatic and you can snap back into being fine. Yeah. But what, what I was hearing was like, I was hearing the, oh, fuck, right. from the audience thinking they were going, oh, fuck, <laughs> like in a good way. <laughs> I've had a lot of those. That's so Especially funny. like when I was younger, I would definitely do that. But they tap into your, so so I didn't know if I was misrepresenting myself. What did he say in the review that? Uh, Bert Kreischer just proves that he is a mouth breathing bro what like it, with his he he admits to being racist which by the way what? not not one point in anywhere in the show do, did i do i ever admit to something i'm not well number one right like i i would i would never like he was misreading so many jokes did you have a joke about race i have Can a you... joke i have a maybe the best joke i've uh, i one of my joke i'm proudest of ever that i've ever oh, been wow. a part of yeah is um about an interaction with the starbucks barista have you heard that uh, uh oh it's um it's like i'm so proud of this joke i cannot wait to see it i'm so proud of this joke i i i my one goal in putting putting my special together uh -huh. was to get to that joke as quickly as possible wow it's like i wanted to open with it but it, it can't it's just too much too much too soon they gotta it's, it's too much too soon into your you energy. got you gotta shake them you gotta, yeah, yeah. I needed a few jabs and then get into that joke, and I think I did it fairly well. Um, but yeah, it's my favorite joke, and it it deals with race, but it it deals more with the irony of people getting offended um, when they don't have the information. Yeah, like people get offended for now so quickly. It's such a knee jerk reaction to just get offended. When you don't have all the information, like uh, which sounds like that's what the reviewer did. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And and by the way, he kind of proved my point, so I felt better about it. But then it was like every he just took, he almost didn't listen. Like he just took the highlights of yeah buzzwords. This is why Bert Kreischer is the reason why um, we should have stricter gun controls. And I was like, what? I was like, I was like, hey, fuckface! If you listen to my joke, that's kind of the point of it. Yeah, like. like you're 
making he really he just, just doesn't like you. Well, you know, I'm really fascinated. He just thinks you would have bullied him in high school. There is a lot That's of that. That's what it is. There's a lot of that. I'm going to be wrong about what I'm about to say. Okay. But comedy's gotten so big that we now have people that make a living commenting on comedy. Mm -hmm. Like they maybe will have like a an internet show. I mean, there's guys who have YouTube channels where they watch people's specials. That's all they do is watch people's specials and laughs. And they get my friends. Frankenstein's Lab. Frankenstein's Lab. They, they they do more than that, but on some they'll just watch comedy and it'll oh, fucking wow. it. yeah, and it's and they can monetize it. They make a living doing watching watching comedy. Yeah. And there's guys that critics of comedy, obviously they're all over New York. Sam knows all of them, right? But the they make money. Some would argue that is bad for comedy. I think it's great for comedy. Okay. I think it's I think it's identical to what's been happening to pro sports forever. People who didn't play the game or wanted to play the game or loved the game so much mm -hmm. Stephen a smith i don't think is i don't think he's an athlete per se i mean i watched him box he's not the best boxer in the world yeah but he critiques athletes and i think it just is better it's good for the comedy you'll yeah. get it you'll get it i guarantee you when this special comes out i think it's going to be huge but i think what's gonna what's what'll be interesting is that because I can't, I could have never seen in my life, knowing you as long as I've known you, anyone be critical of your comedy. Like, really? Point out a flaw in it. I love your comedy. Oh, that's so nice. And it and it crosses over. It does what comedy is intended to do, and that is bridge gaps where my guys that come to see my show mm -hmm. laugh hysterically at you. And yet oh. I don't think that is the intended demographic, but they laugh hysterically at you. Right. And the people who your comedy is meant for, they laugh hysterically at you. To bring those two together is fucking, that's what the art form's for. Thank you. I mean, that means a lot. Yeah, I I don't know. I have people saying stuff. I mean, this will probably come out after it's out. It's, right? you, you, this will drop. Your special is already out right now. Great. Okay. Quarter Life Crisis. Go watch it. Um, Love the title. I, by the way. Thank you. I was so glad they let me. That's the one I wanted from the beginning. Like, mm -hmm. as soon as I got it, I was like, this is what I want to call it. And they Quarter were like, Quarter Life Great. Crisis. I love yeah. it. I, uh, um, I sold a show to CBS when I was young called Preemptive Midlife Crisis. Oh, really? Like, where I, because I, my dad had a midlife crisis when he was like 50, maybe uh -huh. 50, I think maybe four in his 40s uh -huh. cheated on my mom left her left and i was at college and the premise was i was like i'm not gonna i'm not gonna wait until i have everything and then have my midlife crisis mm. happen then i'm gonna have it now when i have nothing so That's i quit my so job funny. i quit my job and i moved to la and i was like i'm having my preemptive midlife crisis wow and that was the premise of the show i love that idea like i'm gonna yeah. get it out of my system so of my i system. don't destroy my life yeah why would i want to have my That's midlife really crisis funny. when i have my whole family i should by the way, I'm wondering if I'm having a midlife crisis now. But keep really? going. Really? Okay. Yeah. I think you have too much fun all the time to have a midlife crisis. I feel like people yeah. have midlife crises when they get bored. Oh, and like, really? yeah, that's what I think it is. I think they get bored and they go, what am I doing? Who am I? This isn't what I wanted. And you're like everything you've ever wanted to be and you have fun constantly. So I have a lot of I have If you have a midlife crisis, you're greedy. Like you can't have everything, you know? <laughs> like that's how I feel about it. Um <laughs> but uh I forget what I was saying with the quarter life special. crisis. Um, uh, are you saying we were talking people about liking it? people critiquing it? And... Oh, people critique. Oh, okay. Yeah. This is another example of someone saying something like this morning I did two interviews and the first one was great. He's like, I watched it. It was fantastic. And then like the second guy was a little bit more like just going through the questions. And at one point he said, uh, I know you started in churches. Um, what does your family think about your comedy now? Because I watched the special and it's definitely not something you'd see in a church. And that felt like, and it wasn't, it was just a question and it's true. It's not something you'd see in a church, but it, to yeah. me, I took it in as like, it's not something you could do in a church. Like yeah. that kind of thing. There's you like judgment want, on it. No one wants a church comedy on Netflix. No. no I mean, it, it's great. Like there's a one lady that does it, does churches in the South in Atlanta. I don't know her name. Shonda Pierce. I think it's Shonda Pierce, yeah. Probably, yeah. She's fucking She's hilarious. Huge. She's hilarious. Blonde? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I have I don't think I've ever watched Shonda Pierce, I'll be honest. I uh I did because my my wife's family loves her. Really? Yeah. Oh wow. I don't want to do comedy that my wife's family is loving. Yeah, that's personally. well, and that's what I talk to 
I think the first guy this morning uh, about who where, are these guys? Uh, it was with some some news thing that Netflix set up. I forget what it was, and then it was just laugh button, which I would talk to a guy I've talked to before, and he was like asking about the parent stuff and and what they thought, and I was like, honestly, dude, like my parents watch AGT and The Bachelor, and they go to work and they go out to dinner and they walk the dog. Like they they would not watch my comedy if I weren't their daughter. Like, I'm not their taste. Yeah. And I used to take that really personally and be like, why don't you think I'm bad? And it's like, no, they wouldn't watch this yeah. if this wouldn't be their thing. And that's okay. And I don't have to feel bad about it. And I've I've told my parents, like, you do not need to watch this. And yeah. I think they probably still will, just out of curiosity. Um, but I've told them multiple times, especially my dad, I'm just like, you don't need to watch it. Like, there's no reason to. It doesn't hurt my feelings. And uh, you probably don't want to. Who wants to watch their daughter do sex jokes on yeah. a major platform? Like I talked to him the other day and he made a comment like, yeah, he's like, uh, people keep reminding us that it's coming out. And I'm like. <laughs> That's a great promo video. Yeah. You watching a part of your special with your dad. Oh, I ah. I can't. No, he hey. was, he's also like, it's really exciting. He's like, really exciting, you know, but I'm also like, you don't need to watch it. And he's like, okay. <laughs> like, I would shoot it. I would shoot. I would shoot you and your dad computer in front of you camera shooting over the computer and you go hey guys it's taylor thomason my special quarter life crisis is streaming right now on netflix and i thought i'd share a little bit of it with my dad and then do one of your intros where um yeah. so i was having sex and your dad just gets up and goes okay i'm out and just walks away and go it's not for everyone <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, i'll hire someone to play my dad because he would never oh yeah yeah, yeah 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 you should hire i'll just have you do it i'll be like this is my dad <laughs> Hire someone to play your dad's great. Uh, yeah. So I think he'll, I think he'll watch it because I did tell him like, yeah, these are the jokes that are gonna be in it about you, basically. Oh, and really? I did. I told him before I filmed it, and he was like, I really appreciate you running it by me, and I was like, yeah, of course. Oh, you're supposed to do that? Uh, <laughs> Fuck. I mean, I didn't do that with any of my daughters. Really? <laughs> oh, never. you don't run it past your daughters? No, fuck no. Well, oh, I take that back. Hold on. Let me rephrase that. Uh, secret time. And the machine, I did not do that at all. You didn't run it past them. Well, they were too young, I but think. But this one you did. This one, um, I would soft pitch them jokes. Yeah. Like They're I also would... all over your Instagram. Like, yeah. It's not like people don't know who your kids are. Yeah. You use their names, like all that stuff. And so, um, yeah, I, I kind of like period party. I had to run by Isla because it was, it was super. Right. It was super connected to like. You know, like it's yeah. it's her story, and a, and a, and then now it's like they're not, like they're really dropping the ball with humor. They like, haven't been funny in a while, and I got nothing. your daughters. Yeah, I'm like what the, the only thing? The only thing I guess apparently I don't remember. I was very. I've been drinking a lot lately. <laughs> uh, I this this last week's I was I had off, uh -huh. so I haven't been on the road, and so we just been partying like all our friends. Apparently, I got drunk one night. At I and I must have grayed out at some point because uh -huh. I do remember bits and pieces of the night. Uh -huh. We were at our friend's house, and Leanne woke up and she said, "Do you remember yelling? Oh yeah, well this dad Bob fucks your mom." <laughs> <laughs> Did they call you a dad bod? Is that they what go, it was? They, I guess they. I guess they were like. Ugh, look at his dad bod. And I was like, "Hey guys, I work out." And they're like, "You do not work out." I go, "I do work out." And they're like, you got a dad bod, and they're walking away. Uh -huh. And they're like, and I go, stop it. And they're just going, dad bod, dad, like over top of me. And I guess, I guess it's, I guess I had come to the end of my rope with that critique. And I was <laughs> like, oh yeah, well, this dad bod fucks your mom. I and, don't even think that's that bad. And so then, oh, and then I got, and then I got apparently very heated. Uh, I believe in luck. I, I'm a real subscriber in luck. Right. Yeah. And, um, I always will tell everyone I'm the luckiest man you'll ever meet. Like yes. I am the luckiest man. And our friends were fucking with me saying that Leanne is luckier than I am. And I was not having it. <laughs> and I guess apparently at the end of the night I got in the car and I was like, I've just about had it with those two. Leanne's like, what? I was like, they need to acknowledge my luck. <laughs> <laughs> like even when I'm, even when I'm combative and drunk, it is yeah, so yeah. ridiculous that you can't like, I woke up the next morning and they were laughing hysterically. I got, we went, we, that was Sunday night, Saturday, yesterday we went to the Britney Spears experience yeah, yeah. and our friends were there and they're like, uh, Hey, uh, is this dad bod still fuck your mom? And we're like, Oh yeah, sorry. I forgot about that. 
Yeah, my kids have been dropping the ball fucking funny lately. Or maybe they just don't think you're funny right now because they're teenagers and they you're their do dad. Not at all. Because I bet they still laugh at stuff. I bet it's not just humor. I like that they they haven't been funny in a while. Maybe they just don't <laughs> subscribe to your particular brand of humor right now. When did you stop kissing your dad? Uh, like on the mouth or at all? I don't ever remember kissing my dad on the mouth. So I, when I was pretty young, I stopped. Georgia would kiss on the mouth up until like, I want to say like ninth grade. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, she stopped. Isla stopped immediately. You could yeah. never kiss Isla on the lips. It was her, that was her first words were just like no more kissing. <laughs> Isla is so against any sort of. We talked about this over yeah. the summer. You were saying she didn't want to be hugged. And I said my one of my sisters is like that. Yeah. And to not take it personally. Yeah. And the, but um last night I said to them, I said, you know what? I think I'm done. I give them kisses on the forehead before mm -hmm. they go to school. Four kisses. It's my OCD. Yeah, you have to. I give them four kisses. And if I give them four kisses, I know they'll be safe. Yes. I wake up I... every morning to make sure I give them four kisses before they walk out the door. That doesn't sound crazy at all to me. Okay. Perfect. But that's probably not a good sign. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just similarly broken. I'm like, yeah, four kisses. If yeah. you can get if you can get it done in four kisses, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to put the light on and off and stomp your foot four times. You don't have to click the make sure the windows are up in your car fifteen times. All right. So I said last night, it it's been a, like they both are annoyed by it. Like yeah. they're both annoyed by it. So I go. So last night I go, hey, just so you guys know, uh, I'm done with kisses. And mm -hmm. they're like, what? And I said, I can be done with it. Like, I just got to know that I'll never do it again. Mm -hmm. And then and then I, I can't do it sporadically because right. if you I do it sporadically, yeah, I got either got to do it or I got to not do it at all. Yeah. And then they're like, huh? Like the, you can see they're like, oh, they, you, they were looking at my wife like, how broken is this dude? <laughs> and my wife's like, and they're like, well, we, we still want to get kisses. And I went. I think it bothers you guys. And they're like, it, it doesn't bother us, dad. It's just, you know, sometimes we're walking out the door and then we hear you go, wait, hold on. And then we have to walk all the way back in. And I said, well, I told him, I go, I do it because it fucks with my head if I don't. Yeah. All day I'm fucking broken. Thinking. Also, I love you. Yeah, also, I love you. <laughs> and uh, I do it because it fucks with my head if I don't. They're like, and also you care about us? <laughs> You're like, oh, yeah, that too, <laughs> for sure. Wait, do you love me too? <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. I love you. Yeah, sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's mostly my shit, though. That's mostly oh, what it is. It was so funny last night because I, I was in a little bit of a pissy mood about we got into a big uh, argument last night, me and the girls, me and Georgia, well, and me and the girls. Mm -hmm. And Isla does this thing where she, me and her play a lot, like, where she'll be like, if if you have a drink, she'll be like, hey, uh, you know? <laughs> And you go, huh? And she'll like, hey, little, rah, 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 rah. <laughs> it's it's almost like she's she does it like she'll play with you with her eyes to like connect. Yeah. And I was and I t I said the whole thing about kisses and they're like laying on the couch and they're like, no, we're fine giving you kisses. I go, I feel like you're not. And they're like, no, it's just the way you do it is like it's like we're walking out the door. And I go, yeah, but. And they're like, uh, no, we still want to give you kisses. I go, okay. And so then I like goes, hey, uh, little. And she could tell I was in a bad mood. Mm -hmm. I was like, what, Isla? She was like, hey, little. And then she looked at me like, oh, it was crazy. She looked at me like, oh, you're not going to play with me right now? Like, w this is our game we do. Yeah. And then she did these eyes like, don't do this to Aww. me. And I went, oh, I know what you want. And she went, nah, there we go. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, she got me back in. Whatever falls in love with that child, whatever she... <laughs> whatever. I don't know what it is going to be. It's yeah. going to be a girl or a boy or whatever whoever. it is. Whatever. Yeah, whoever. I should have yeah. said whoever. Oh, I said, yeah, I don't know why I said whatever. That yeah. sounds fucking horrible. <laughs> okay. Fucking goat. No, whoever falls in love with that child is going to have the funnest ride of their life. Yeah. That kid is so fucking goofy. Uh huh. I just. So, wait, what? How did. Tell me more about you and Sam. I'm curious to know, like, how did you guys meet? Did you always think he was cute? Like, where did you see him? Yeah, so I hadn't I hadn't met him in person until like I think when I did your podcast. I wish I I should have gone back and looked at the exact day I did your podcast because 
I might have done your podcast like the day before I kind of met him. Where did you Honestly, meet him in LA? Uh, yeah, I he had like sent me messages after like my late night sets. Like, can I tell you really what's funny? so fucking hilarious about this? What is that? The one thing that you guys connect on, regardless of anything, like, and if this did not work, if this one thing wasn't there, you guys wouldn't have anything together. The one thing is you guys both respect good comedy yeah like you go both very very and i am not un, not at all uh trying to undersell this at all but you guys are very very talented comedians oh thank if you if not two of the best like to the top in your game in my opinion oh that's nice you and you you know i've always felt that about you right. obviously I've, I've shared that with you a million times <laughs> but sam is what is one of the top five joke writers he's so in, good in the business i mean yeah. Without a doubt, and I, and I say that knowing full well that like David tells in that group, mm -hmm. I mean he's just amazing, and I, I'm I've known him for a while. Yeah, but uh, but well, so, and I've never dated anybody uh, who's talented. Who was? <laughs> 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 I never dated anyone who was good at anything. Um, no, I I've never dated like someone who was just better than me at comedy, and it's. I think it's oh. probably good for me. It's like oh, and I and I know what you're saying because yeah, because. Sam is so good. You've been doing it like almost fifteen years. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You know. That's interesting. You never dated someone. So, yeah. So how does that work? Like when you guys are laying in bed or you guys are eating lunch, uh -huh. and say, uh, say, a uh, lady walks by with a with a dog, <laughs> and, and we go the, dibs. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> like, do you guys are you, are you guys laughing a lot? Yeah. Oh my god, so much. It's like cra Like that's the other thing is like. I, I had dated a comic uh, a while back and it was like very toxic. And then I dated my ex-fiance right afterward. And I think I was like, there were a lot of things missing in that relationship, but I felt like, I, I felt like it was what I needed. I was like, I need stability. I yeah. need someone stable and like normal and whatever. And um, I was just like, yeah, I don't, I have like comedian friends. Like I don't need to be like, laughing hysterically all the time or whatever and so like now dating sam we laugh all the time like we have so much fun together it's i can't imagine so much yeah it's just I, like i know so i know how much i laugh around him i know how much yeah. i laugh around you i just i go what would that be like i mean he and honestly like i i think he's such a good comedian i think he's so funny on stage i think he's like a thousand times funnier off stage yeah. like i think he's somehow even better like i had so back to your original question i I knew him. I didn't, I had never met him before, but he had sent me messages after like my Fallon set and my Conan set this last year that were like, Hey, really great. And all that. And I thought that was very nice. Um, and that's the other thing about Sam, not to derail these conversations uh -huh. continually, but Sam isn't a dog. So like he sends you that as a comic to another comic. Right. Yeah. He's like, Hey, great set. I, I, I search out great comics. Mm -hmm. I found you just want to let you know. I love that. Dot, dot, dot. And it's yes. all technical. It's all fucking works. That's so crazy. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. Nothing weird about it at all. And um, then I I saw him very briefly in New York, like in July. And it was just like, he just said like great set or something. And I only remember it because I he was like up after me and I was just like, oh man, I hope that guy's not here because he already thinks I'm funny. <laughs> and I just want him to know I think I'm funny. I don't want to bomb here. And then God, him does too. that ever go away, do you think? I hope so. It doesn't. And not, it doesn't. Not, I mean, not, not for you. Me. Then probably I had not to follow for me Jerry Seinfeld the other night. Oh yeah. And I was like, please let him leave the fucking room I immediately. Get that, yeah. But I'd rather watch you than Jerry Seinfeld. Like uh, that's just personal. The audience felt taste, the same. But, but no. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, I mean, we took a poll. Uh, no, uh, no. But I, I just didn't like. It's that. It's times like that where I get embarrassed of who I am. Where I go, oh Bert, don't take your shirt off. Then I'm like, this is who I am. Yeah. Like I, I hate. That who I am can immediately deter a comic like Jerry Seinfeld who just goes, what the fuck? Oh, I see what you're saying. You but go, that could just be, you might just be putting that out I'm sure there. I am. I'm yeah, sure like, am. I'm sure if you talk to Jerry Seinfeld, he wouldn't be like, yeah, I thought it was bullshit. You know, like. I bet he would. But maybe he would. I who actually, knows? I actually bet he would. Or maybe he would leave regardless. You yeah, know? I, it's I, like, I, I was like, I knew it was a Sebastian and Sebastian. I don't think Sebastian's going to stick around and watch anything I do. Right. I, I just think Sebastian's not going to go home. Yeah, he's just going to go home. He's yeah. not, not going to sit there and drink. He's not going to party. And he's with right. Jerry Seinfeld. They're going to go out and talk about cars or something. Right. Or like 
So I was like, oh, at least that'll make me feel better. Yeah. And and if he did shit on me, I know Sebastian would probably defend me a tad bit and be right. like, he's actually a pretty good comic. Yeah. If he sat and watched But you. keep going. Keep going. Oh, so, um, so that's like the only contact I ever had with him. Like he just said like great set at the cellar and then I left and uh, cause that's what I do. And then in August he was here uh, doing a show at dynasty and he just messaged me like, I don't know and was like, Hey, like, I'm sure you're really busy, but uh, you know, I just want someone funny to open the show. And he's like, if you can't, it's totally fine. He's like, but you know, if you want to come do like 20 minutes for and I was like, yeah, for sure. And uh, luckily it was like late enough that I could do it after my other spots. Um, and so I met him there and talked to him for like five minutes before the show and was just like, oh, this guy is like so different than what I thought he was like, as far as like, because all I'd seen him was on stage. So I thought he was kind of like standoffish mm -hmm. is what you see. I'm like, because he's got like a very cool energy on stage, which yeah. I don't relate to at all. Uh, <laughs> I'm not cool at all on stage. So I just thought he'd be different and he was just like very warm and nice and cool. And I was like, well, oh, okay, cool. And uh, yeah, I thought I always... No, I thought he was cute, but I was never like, oh, I would date that dude. Like, because all I knew about him was that he was a really good comic and that he uh, was a big drinker. And I was just like, I can't do that. Like, I just I would never date anybody who drank a lot because I just can't for me. Um, but yeah, so I met him at that and sent him a message afterward. I was like, hey, thanks for having me. Like, I had an early flight, so I just left. I did my set and I left. And uh, so Taylor, I know. Well, I had an early flight. It's so and, fucking uh, weird. You're just <laughs> oblivious. I, I had an early flight, and he was like, "Yeah, for sure. Thanks for doing it." Like, sent me his numbers. Like, let me know if you're in New York sometime. And uh, then I think I texted him my number, and then he was at Comedy on State for the first time that weekend. No, I was at Comedy on State for the first time that weekend, and he was at Comedy Works in Denver for the first time that weekend, which are two of like, the best clubs in the country. Yeah. So I texted him like, hey, how is it? And we just started talking like over text just as like friends for, you know, I don't know, I guess like a month we were doing that or something. And then uh, I, met, I only met, I met him like a couple weeks before my like breakup. And... Then like a few weeks after, I mean, I was so after that breakup, I was like, I am not, I don't want to care about anybody for a really long time. <laughs> like, yeah. cause when we started, when we started talking and it was kind of like, oof, there might be something going on here. I was very much like, I told him, I was like, I really like you like as a person. And I, I would like to have you in my life for a long time. I'm like, and if we date, that will probably ruin that. I was like, very cynical. <laughs> I was just like, that'll ruin it. He's like, well, I can't be your friend now. And I was like, all right, well. I can't be fuck i guess now. like you know <laughs> this is a trap um because i but i was like maybe we should just it's be too friends. late for me to be your friend so. yeah i was like okay well then i guess we're doing this and uh <laughs> there were so many reasons i didn't want to because it was like the distance the comedy thing <laughs> that's the, so funny though i right? if leanne hadn't loved me back i'd be like yeah well i'm done with you in my life yeah, like I, I can't just watch you enjoy your life. I'm in love right. with you, and that's not gonna be. That is right. such a funny fucking premise that yeah. that you there is like uh, there. I have no interest in Leanne being happy if it's not with me. <laughs> yeah, that, he's like you, and he's like you wouldn't like that either. He's like you would not want to hear about me dating other women. And I was like, I I don't know. I think I could get to a point where oh. I was okay. I bet, like yeah, because it was before we were like in love like it was early this was early on oh, i'll be the most jealous ghost i'm ghost i'm if jealous i was a too. ghost if i was a ghost and she was like she was like i start giggling in bed with someone i'd be like yeah. boo <laughs> if you died boo, and she, boo, you don't boo. want her to get remarried if you wait if you do die. ghosts say boo yeah that's that's the that's an odd thing boo it is, yeah oh they go boo they don't go boo <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've never seen one, but that's what people say um, that they say. Yeah. So we I was very like, I mean, he really he had to like kind of almost talk me into it for a little bit because I was just like I was a I mean, I was a nightmare to yeah. get to date at that point because I had yeah. just like given an engagement ring back. And he's just like, he's like, I'm a little worried I'm a rebound. I'm like, you are absolutely not. I'm trying not to date you. <laughs> I'm not I'm, I don't want to do this at all. But uh we also like we we were texting for like a few weeks or whatever and then like there was a night we talked on the phone for seven hours from like midnight to 7 a.m 
And after that, it was like, all right, well, there were a few days after that that I didn't talk to him that much. And then the next time we talked on the phone was like five hours while I was driving somewhere. And uh, like at that point, we were like, okay, we should probably address this. And his thinking, well, he was like, that would have been insane if you had talked to me for seven hours on the phone. If we talked all night and then you were just like, oh, I guess we're done. He's like, that was insane. That was like an emotional one night stand. And I was yeah. like, yeah, I was like, I guess I'm I'm different in the way that like people can have sex with somebody and then just walk away. That seems insane to me. I'm like, how do oh. people do that? But like to me, talking to someone all night and then like never talking to them again doesn't seem that weird. <laughs> So I have different intimacy <laughs> issues, I guess, where I'm like, I would never let someone inside me and then just like walk away like a burning building. That's crazy. Oh. But like if I if I talk to someone all night, I'm like, yeah, no, we had a good conversation. That's oh. like what a nice like moment that was. Do you remember? Did you ever see the movie Vanilla Sky? I didn't know. That's Tom Cruise, right? Yeah, it's Vanilla Sky. Cameron Diaz says something in that movie when she right before she's about to kill him. Uh huh. That is so real i love when you find a line that is like so real she but she says um I, it makes gross with me out to say uh -huh. but she goes she's like so wait i'm nothing to you and he was like well you know I, and she's like i had your cum in my mouth and yeah. i was like oh yeah. that's an aggressive statement and she it goes, is yeah it is <laughs> <laughs> i literally said that like last night basically wait what? i didn't say that but like we <laughs> Sam got like this stuff to take when you're like getting sick because we've been like sick a lot. So he got he went to like some like holistic pharmacy when he was in La Jolla and like got all this stuff for us. And this stuff tastes like death. It tastes like surgery, <laughs> but it works. And we were drinking and he's like, see, he's like, this is where like me drinking for so long helped me out because I've taken like shots and stuff. He's like, you've never done that. And I said, I've swallowed semen. <laughs> like, you think I haven't tasted a bad thing for a second? Like, come on. And he's come like, on. all right. <laughs> You want to trade? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, all right. He's like, well, sorry. I was like, I'm not, I'm just saying, you're not better than me. Like, because oh. you've taken a shot before. <laughs> God. Yeah. That's and so I'm like, and also, when you take a shot, you don't have to pretend it tasted good. <laughs> hiring is challenging, but there's one place you can go where hiring is simple, fast, and smart. A place where growing businesses connect to qualified candidates, and that place is ziprecruiter.com slash Bertcast. ZipRecruiter sends your job to over a hundred of the web's leading job sites, but they don't just stop there. With their powerful matching technology, ZipRecruiter scans thousands of resumes to find the right people with the right experience and invites them to apply to your job. You can even add screening questions to your job listing so you can filter candidates and focus on the best one. ZipRecruiter is so effective that four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. And right now, to try ZipRecruiter for free, my listeners can go to ZipRecruiter.com slash BirdCast. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash BirdCast. ZipRecruiter.com slash BirdCast. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. This episode of the BirdCast is brought to you by Whoop. We are all trying to figure out different ways to be healthier, whether it's getting to the gym more often or being smarter about our nutrition. But often, sleep is overlooked as a crucial part of what makes us perform our best every day. And our sponsor, Whoop, is a fitness tracker that provides next level insights so users can be smarter about sleep and optimize their performance. Through 24 seven physiological data collection and industry leading accuracy, Whoop provides those key personalized insights and deep analytics that actually let you know how much sleep you need how recovered your body is to take on each day, and how much strain you put on your body from everything you do in and out of training. I absolutely love my Whoop. In using Whoop, I found out that on the tour bus, I don't sleep that well. So I figured out why not get hotel rooms to catch up on my sleep, and that's what I'm doing, and I wouldn't have known that without Whoop. If you're looking to be smarter about how you sleep, recover, and train, so you can be your best, you have to get a Whoop. For my listeners, Whoop is offering 15% off when you use the code BERT at checkout. Go to Whoop.com, that's W-H-O-O-P.com, and use the code BERT at checkout to save 15% off your order. Unlock your best self today. Leanne got me glasses, and first night I put them on, and I was like, oh my God, I can fucking see. Like, I can see words. 
like <laughs> I can see words on the page. Yeah. Like I can see the I can see the the indentations on the page where the like I can see like the texture of the page uh-huh. on this book. I'm like, there's a texture to this page. Oh my yeah. God. And then Leanne comes in and sees me in glasses and is like, Oh my God, you look adorable. I'm like, this is win fucking win. <laughs> I look cute. I'm reading. <laughs> Like this, how great is this going to get? And then she climbs up the bed and gives me a kiss. And I realize I've been looking at this bitch in standard definition for the past 10 years. If I could notice the textures on a page, I definitely saw them on her face. I'm like, when did you get so fucking old? I'm staring at her in high def. Like, get the fuck out of here. Break these glasses. Save my marriage. Is that working? uh, It it does. But, you know, I think Greg Fitzsimmons has a joke similar to it. Oh, okay. It's kind of similar. So Mm -hmm. I was going to put it my last uh, in in like, it's been around since I got these glasses. Mm -hmm. I kind of just got away from it. Um, Yeah. uh, So. Yeah. I feel like a lot of my, what I'm writing these days. Is shitting on Leanne? uh, You know, I, Joe told me that the other day. Yeah. I had this great fucking joke. Mm-hmm. And he was like, it's it's a bad joke. And I was like, what? Like but, mean or it's a bad joke? It's a bad joke because he goes, because you're, you're just not coming off right. The premise was. Who told you? Joe Rogan. Oh, okay. And so um, we did a show together the other night and both of my sets were fucking base at mm-hmm. best. It's all new material, you yeah. know? I don't think some people don't understand that. They think. I'm not going in there to do old material. I didn't get out of bed. I didn't fucking leave my family to do shit that I know works. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. And so, um, and the premise was, we got we bought this house. We bought a new house. We bought it. Technology is amazing. Mm-hmm. Uh, came up on Redfin as an alert of like what in our neighborhood that we liked and the price we liked. Mm-hmm. Leanne sees it, sends it over to our real estate agent. Real estate agent grabs it, sends it to the other real estate agent. Other real estate agent says it's, it's not even on the market yet. Are you interested? And we said, yeah. We'd like to put in an offer. Put in an offer. Now we have this house. And Leanne and I are sitting in the backyard of this house the other day. And she goes, can you believe probably without technology, we would have never gotten this house. Mm-hmm. And I thought, I wonder what kind of wife I would have gotten with technology. Because I met Leanne before technology. When you had to right. just stake a claim. Just, oh, there's no Native Americans here. Conk, oh this gosh. is safe. Yeah. We'll live here for the rest of our lives. Yeah. Hilarious that you think white people were ever like, oh, good. No Native Americans here. I think we just like removed them. <laughs> yeah. I don't think we were that cool. Like, oh, no one's here. Cool. We'll settle. I was thinking of far and away when they all got on horses just with white flags. Oh, yeah. And yeah. they were like, all right, Conk, yeah. this is my land. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. There's a river near it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And, and Leanne like, is very cool about the jokes you do. He said, Joe, Joe was like, it just you're shitting on your wife and that's not you. Yeah. He was like, you love your wife. Like, why the fuck wouldn't you say you love your wife? And I was like, yeah. I don't know. It's just a joke. Like, and then all of a sudden you get to this place. You're like, I'm just trying to fucking survive up there. Right. Like, yeah, like yeah, in yeah. your head, you're like, I just, I'm fucking, I got no material. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And so, and then the premise, the part of the joke I liked, which is true, is before I met Leanne, I'd seen one picture of her mm-hmm. and it was her with, um, what I thought was a special needs person. Uh huh. And, uh, and I was, and then they were like, they were like man she's single you want to meet her and i was like fuck yeah and then i was like wait which one is she (laughs) and i was like doesn't matter i'll fuck both of them Uh and so that was the joke i liked was it's true is that there was this picture of leanne at disney world with what looked like a special needs person i mean that's that's funny regardless of who the other person was in the picture like yeah that you were just like which one it doesn't matter (laughs) like that's such a so i was trying to i was trying to add to it and 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 Tim Dillon and I were like, oh, it's gold. And then Joe's like, yeah. I, I, you guys, same thing as the dog joke. He goes, yeah, you guys weren't listening to the room. Yeah. The room was like, oh, this fucking guy. What's he want? What's he get a little money? Wants to cheat on his wife? And you're like. It does kind of sound like that sometimes. Yeah. It yeah. Does. yeah. Which it, I've had the same thought about you where I'm like, Bert's like so not that person. Like yeah. you don't. Like you've even talked about, we talked about this last time where you're like, I haven't been with that many people. And I yeah. wonder, do you think it comes from that where you're like, I wonder if I had had that phase? Cause I think about that with me where I go, I hear so many people talking about like having that phase where they got all this whatever out of their system in their life uh, sexually. And I've just been in relationships and I love being in relationships, but friends of mine have said like, oh, you need to have that phase or something. And I have friends who 
miss that phase who now want that phase like i think men and women both feel that way and i wonder if any of that i don't think I, I couldn't have had that phase yeah you're too I anxious just, i'm too anxious and I, yeah, i'm same. scared of venereal diseases yeah. and yeah so I, I could never have had that phase yeah i think it i think you know a lot of a lot of times i think and i maybe people don't get credit enough about this so there's comics uh who try a joke and then get cancel cultured because mm -hmm. a joke's too aggressive or mm -hmm. whatever right my version of that is just coming off a tab at unlikable mm. in a joke that i'm trying to figure out also yeah like i've done i've definitely you know what it is woke people don't want to like your comedy yeah i think people no. want to dismiss you as like bro -y yeah and like racist and whatever else that guy said yeah so yeah if you give them even an inch they just like run with it I yeah bet. It woke people do not at all want to there's no part of them that goes okay the guy ripped his shirt off i can't wait to hear right it. yeah there's yeah. just so many part i mean i think they probably look at me like gronk <laughs> like they go oh great another one of these fucking guys yeah. we got a stomach but there's, you know, then there's people on like the club side of things who like that sort of comedy who there's probably fans of yours that look at people who like bring a guitar out on stage and go, oh, this fucking, you know, yeah. like everybody has stuff that makes them go, I'm out. Like people will do that with me. Just like lady. No, you know, like That's so funny. Yeah. I had a guy come to one of my shows. Uh. I don't remember. It was maybe like four months ago or something. And uh, he came with his girlfriend and he comes up to me after the show and he goes, I've never seen a female comic and I don't like them. And my girlfriend brought me and he goes, and I knew I thought you were going to suck. So I brought this fireball with me. I snuck it in and he brings out this little bottle of fireball and he goes, and I you were great. And I didn't even have to open it. <laughs> You're like, wow. Thank you, I think. Can you put that on my Yelp review, <laughs> yeah, please? Yeah, seriously. Didn't have to open my emergency fireball to get through Jesus this Christ. clam snapping. <laughs> it's it's got to be. A weird it's thing. funny because most men, most male comics mm -hmm. know that the adage of females aren't funny is not accurate at all. No. I mean, there are male comics out there that probably believe it. I think they're not worth their weight. What I hear now is like there aren't that many good female comics. There aren't that many good comics. Right. That's that. what I think. There is a there is a there is a uh, a plethora of male comedy. Yeah. Especially white male comedy. Mm -hmm. And I don't know I don't know what that I don't know why that is. I don't know why white guys think believe inherently that they can do this. I mean, I think every yeah. white guy thinks I could probably do comedy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I obviously thought that. I don't know that I think every white guy thinks that. But yeah, I think you're right. A lot of them are just very confident and are like, this is... This is what I could do. This is what I could do. Yeah. Even I if would they say, don't want to. What, what percentage of do you think white men... I'm just saying white men. Because I think... Are comedians? I think the black men, I think, is actually higher. Of of, of what, what percentage, percentage of comedians are white, white men? No, what percentage of white men think they could do comedy? Oh. Legit? I don't know. In their diary, right, I could probably get on stage. Mm. Or like I would say 45% of white yeah, men. Yeah, I was going to say 50. 50%. How many percentage, what percentage of black men do you think I could definitely get on stage and do that? I don't know. 75%? I don't know. I mean, I think black men are funnier than white men, just period. I think black men naturally are funnier than white men, uh -huh. naturally. 100%. Me and Skirv, yeah. I don't know if I said it with Segura, but I definitely have believed that. Mm -hmm. Going to any barbershop, any of the guys fucking cracking jokes are 10 times funnier than half of the fucking white guys you'll see out there. Mm -hmm. um, here's a st here's something I said yesterday that my daughters fucking lit up on me. And then I had to defend. And I think I won the defense. You ready for this observation? It started with ugly women. And Georgia goes, you're looking at those <laughs> girls on the street, aren't you? And I went, hold on. And she goes, no. Ugh. She goes, no, you were looking at those girls on the street. And you formed a statement that started yeah. with ugly women. And I said, yes, it did. And she goes, I just want you to acknowledge that. Okay, yeah. keep going. <laughs> All women, including ugly women. Uh-huh. That's nice of you to include include them. <laughs> try to look pretty. All women. Yeah. All, not all men. Ugly men often give up. Right. Ugly men never attempt to look good looking. Yeah. They well, just go, 
fucking hockey jersey sweatpants. Yeah. I'm fucking, I don't know, I'm just I'm going to Comic Con this well, year. Well, that's because, like, we're so conditioned that, like, the first thing we should be is pretty. Like, a, like before anything else, just be pretty. And then you can worry about everything else. Be Barbie, and then you can have all these jobs. It's like, so crazy. Yeah. But guys don't have to be good looking to, like, be successful or, like, get someone really hot or whatever. Like, so it's not as big a motivator for them. That's so bizarre to me. I couldn't get past it that, like, these three girls that were walking by the Beverly Center were just shit shows. I mean, real train wrecks. But they were all gussied up like whores. And I was like, they, uh, it's almost that like they sentence don't... that you said is like. <laughs> Is so, problematic. That's so rough. What you know, like? These train wrecks are all gussied up like whores. But uh, I don't know why woke people hate me. It's so weird. <laughs> no, but like they were like they were like they were like. I'm just saying like I'm trying to I'm trying to put it in perspective. Uh huh. They were. It was like they had no idea of like the appropriate amount of clothing that should cover part of a body. Uh huh. Like they. And, but if they were if they were hot, you would have been like, that's fine. No, I, I, by the way, wearing. I don't, I don't, if they were hot, I probably would have been like, that's fine. Wow. I would have been like, I would have not noticed it as much as I noticed. I was like, why, like, why can't, here's what I'm, here's what I'm, so if you're, if you're like Crystalia, mm -hmm. you can look a certain way. You can dress a certain way because you're a good looking guy. You, if you're going to wear a fucking, like a, I don't know what he wears, but like good looking clothes and he dresses up and he looks he attempts at looking hot. Mm -hmm. If I put on those clothes, you'd immediately go, "What the fuck are you doing?" <laughs> right? So then, yeah, hold on. So, so that's my this is my point. Yeah. With women, we don't do that. We go, okay. Everyone's got to try to get the fucking brass ring. Oh. Everyone's got to dress like that. With guys, if I dressed that way, like if I dressed like um, like in like like in a leather jacket and like I have a leather shirt that I bought and no one will let me wear it. Because really? they're like, who the fuck do you think you are? <laughs> Halston, have you seen it? Is it bad? No, I, oh. I have a black leather shirt that I bought at at it's so cool. And every time I put it on, they're like, they're like, hey, you're trying too hard. You're also a dad. Like you're older than Crystalia. You're a dad. You're married. Yeah. Like in the same way, like if my dad tried to dress like Crystalia, that would be weird too. But I don't think that's right. I think women you you do that with women too. Like if somebody's mom tries to dress like she's in college ooh, you're like ooh. what are you doing i know someone whose mom does that oh yeah 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 and they and it was a a bone of contention is uh -huh. that the right word uh source, source of, of contention. contention yeah her whole life because yeah there are moms that dress slutty and you're like and, and they're really hot and they yeah. dress you know younger i think i think I think it's less so like you dress, you shouldn't dress hotter than you are. It's that you shouldn't dress younger than you are. I think that's what's noticeable. Well, it's, like with it's those girls that you saw were, is it, was it that they were ugly to you or is it that they were too old to be dressing? How no, they no, dressing? no. They were all uh, age appropriate. It was just like, it was like, I guess it's maybe, maybe I am being an asshole. Maybe it's bo body positive images of like yeah. one girl was in a, like a, a, a see-through, not even a halter like but like it was like a a blossomy type type thing that like had elastic under her tits but you could see through it it's like a mesh oh, yeah. blank and then she had a bra on but she was easily 280 pounds and then she had like what looked like um they were probably shorts at one point but they just looked like a bathing suit because uh -huh. they were so high up and then she had like uh combat boots on and i was just and she was but none of these clothes fit her from my perspective i was like but that's i don't know i think fitting someone that's very that doesn't sound like it was supposed to be like a shirt that covered that sounds like a style of a shirt yeah it's a style of a shirt to i just wear. in my head i was like I was, it's not like somebody put on clothes and they're like oh this doesn't fit or these aren't no, right it, for it, me it's it, like no this is a look i'm fit, going for they fit they fit her but it was like almost like certain things i i wouldn't wear in public but mm. I take that back because I perform. Maybe they were doing, so. yeah, and also maybe they were doing like a photo shoot or they're yeah, going to a maybe. thing. Like, maybe See, that's what I got to do. I, I don't yeah. do that enough. What you're doing is defending the situation and going, well, maybe, and that's what my daughters do. I think that's what women yeah. do, where they go, hold on, we've been judged so much. Yeah, let's take one step back. And I think men don't do. I, I won't say men. Yeah. I don't do that enough. 
I just don't know the situation. I mean, if you're, you know, at your daughter's fourth birthday party wearing a bikini in your 40s, it's like, that's probably not the time to be wearing that. It's yeah. not that you can't wear it. It's just like, oh, maybe not the appropriate thing. If people are, you know, dressing inappropriately to do stand up, that will bother me because in the same way, if Chris D'Elia took his shirt off and performed, everyone would be like, fuck this guy. No. <laughs> you know? I'd be like, hello. That's, but that's <laughs> what I'm saying. Nobody would be like, because he's in really like good shape. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, I assume. Yeah. He's in great shape. That's what I'm saying. Like Nobody wants to... That's not funny. That's like, what are you doing? Yeah. I guess that's why I gained the weight back, you know? I just figured. <laughs> it's You're funny. a hero. I've had, that's what I had a lot of, I had a lot of epiphanies this weekend. You want to hear my other one? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I am... I have never been attracted to young girls. That's probably good. No, but when I was young. Oh, you didn't like women your age I was when you were not, young? I did not. I always was attracted to older women. I thought older yeah. women were sexier. There was something I just didn't like about. I said this to Bill at the football game. I've always been attracted to old what the look of an older woman. Uh-huh. Like Susan Sarandon. Yeah. Like, uh, like uh, Susan Sarandon, I think, is so fucking sexy. She is. She's hot. And like, and but she's always been sexy. Yeah, I don't ever know what like but when she she was young though. At one point, did you think she was hot when she was young? I don't think I ever knew her when she was young. Oh, okay. Like I, I only knew who Bull Durham. Okay. Bull Durham, Susan Sarandon is the only one I knew. So, Andy, look up a Andy picture Mac, of Andy Susan McDonald. Sarandon? Is that her name? I don't know. Andy oh, Mac, Andy McDowell. And yeah, she in uh, was she in uh, Groundhog's Day? Yes, I believe yeah. so. Yeah, like I'm gonna look up Susan Sarandon young and see if you are still on board i bet you will be oh, let me see this is but here's what's crazy right what so then do I you have a bit about this no i don't no i'm trying to i'm trying to write so i'm having a bunch of crazy oh thoughts. here's her young wow okay. in 1983 yeah. i just can't oh yeah put your glasses on glasses. <laughs> jesus christ <laughs> Uh, I know there's something vulnerable about that picture. I don't like. Oh wow, you like you like them like sturdy emotionally. I don't like, I, and I don't know if I think I realized this the other day, but I was like, I was watching my daughter's softball game, and I was like, and all of a sudden I went like, hey, I haven't once had an idea like that any of these girls are cute, like uh -huh. or that are attractive, but I bet there are dudes who would sit at a high school softball game and be like, oh, right. she's a smoke show. Right, not and, even in like a leery way, just like know that objectively. It, even objectively, even in a leery way, in any kind of way, not once have I looked at and any of those girls that way. And I went, wonder, 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 I wonder why. And I said, you know what's so funny? I feel identical to how I did when I was sixteen, and I watched a girls' softball team, and I was like, I don't know, it, the coach does it for me. Oh, like, interesting. The, and not, not to say that Georgia softball coach does it for me, but like right. saying like, yeah. the, like I was always leaning that way. Even Leanne's older than me, but Leanne, the one thing I have always said to Leanne is she got prettier the older she got. Mm -hmm. And I, and I was like, wait, I guess that's a good problem to have. But then that I, doesn't sound like a problem. No, no, no. It's, <laughs> it's not a problem at all. It's like all of a sudden your wife is sexier because she's getting yeah. older. You're like, oh, cool. Yeah. Wait, that's fucking odd. Um, but I, I thought to myself, I bet there are dudes who go to these softball games and they're like, or like hang out with their, their kid, their kid, like that little yeah. picture of Susan just Sarandon just, just looks like vulnerable. Like yeah. I don't like that. Oh, okay. She's 73. Good for her. I mean, the picture we pulled up was Mary Tyler Moore. 20s. Mary Tyler Moore. Fucking gorgeous. Yeah. Mary Tyler Moore is probably one of the most beautiful women I've ever seen in my life. She is gorgeous. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She's still alive. She was a oh, hard, I don't think raging so. alcoholic. She's probably. I think I hope she's she, dead Mary Tyler now that I just said Moore's. That. Is she gone? I think she probably is. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Twenty seventeen. Okay, so recently. Uh, so. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I don't know. That makes me feel what better about, about not what knowing kind of, that. What kind of man were you attracted to? Like growing up, was there like a was it like when you were a kid and you were like. Like Isla's attracted to John Cena. Oh yeah. Like she, you can't talk. Sh two people you can't talk shit about with <laughs> Isla are John Cena and Loki. Hilarious. Those are very different. Those are the most totally di fucking <laughs> different. You got a goth and a meathead. Yeah, that's really funny. Yeah, you I don't know. I said something about John Cena the other day, and she goes, "Hey." Not in this house. And I went, "What? She goes, don't we don't house. talk bad about John Cena, Dad?" That's so funny. He's funny. 
You're like, whatever. <laughs> I uh, I had a big crush on John Krasinski when I was younger. Who's he? The Jim from The Office. For real? Yeah, yeah. I had a big crush on him when I was when I was like in Have high school. Have you met him? No. You, you're going to be able to meet him. I don't think that's true. Oh, 100%. Really? <laughs> John I mean, Krasinski? We'll see. That's who I had a crush on in high school. Really? That's, yeah, yeah. And I mean, you know, I guess most of the guys I've dated have been like tall, thin white guys. <laughs> Tall thin white guys. Yeah, that's what what I tend to pull guy? in. Have I ever? Yeah. No. Would you? Yeah, of course. Have you ever have you ever been attracted to a black guy? Yeah, of course. Ooh. I think Donald Glover is like so hot. Donnell Rollins? No, Don, <laughs> Donald Glover. <laughs> Donald Glover? Yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah. He's Michael B. Jordan. Everybody's into Michael B. Jordan. I'm not. I can't. It's hard for me to put. Uh, I can, I'm not attracted to a lot of black dudes, so I can't. I can't. Michael B. Jordan. Everybody's attracted to Michael B. Jordan. I don't know who he is. You, yes, you do. He's in Creed. Oh, yeah. Wait, he's the bad guy in Black Panther. Yeah. Yes. Oh, he's a stud. He's so hot. Not, my, not what I'd go for. What? I'm gonna try to think what kind of black guy I'd want to have sex with. <laughs> I gotta be honest with you. You ready for this? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna paint the picture of my perfect black dude I date. Okay. Mm -hmm. If I was into black dudes. Mm hmm. Have you ever wanted to date a guy? No. You've never been attracted to a guy uh, ever? Not not, not even. even one time. You were not like, Not even. Huh. I mean, no, don't get me wrong. If Brad Pitt cornered me in a closet and tried to kiss me, I'd probably just let it happen. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's fucking Brad Pitt, you yeah. know? But is that Those celebrity stories. or is that's that? Celebrity. Yeah. And that's all his fucking movies. What if, what if it was Brad Pitt, but you didn't know who he was and no. he wasn't no, famous? No, 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 no. Really? No, 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 never. But he never. still looks like Brad no, Pitt. No, 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 no. Do you feel like that's just who you are? Or do you feel no, like you've been conditioned? I've been conditioned for that. Yeah, yeah. Because if been, you'd grown up maybe differently, maybe you'd be more open to that. Uh, I've been hardcore conditioned to that. Mm -hmm. Like there's certain things in, in, that I I've, that I feel like have less to do with how I believe and more to do with like how I was raised. raised. Yeah. And, and by the way, and it wasn't my parents raising me. It was Florida. Right. Like, yeah, yeah. Uh, like. Like there's certain things, and Florida's such a weird fucking place. Yeah, and like, and like you know, the majority of people in Florida are in shape more than say the other places because it's so sunshiny. Yeah. So there's a lot of outdoors activities. Um, if I was gonna date a black guy, I I would want him to be kind of pimpish. Like what? I'd want him to be smoking black and milds and and uh, have like a fedora. I want like a like a old Southern playlistic, like a big boy from Outcast. I think you just like I think you just I think, skew older I just, with what you're attracted yeah. to. By the way, I think as long as I they're older than you, them, I just want to hang out with them and listen to them. <laughs> okay, tell me more style. That's a different thing, then. Yeah, I yeah, I don't think I want to hang out with plenty of people. I wouldn't Wait, have sex. You, with. Have you looked at girls and be like, I could totally date her? Yeah, for real. Yeah, yeah. Do you but think that's an age thing? Because like I that was not an there was no such thing. I understand there is a such thing as bisexual, but mm -hmm. when I was a kid, there you would hear bisexual and people would go, "Oh, you mean gay?" And then oh, like, I see. Like there was no. I remember one time yeah. we were in a limo and someone was like, "Some guy was like, uh, said something about hooking up with a dude," and he was like, "Ah, it's not that bad." And everyone was like, "I'm sorry, what?" Right. And they're like, "He's like, yeah, I made out with a buddy of mine in high school. We used to make out with each other, but we weren't gay." And everyone, everyone in the thing was like, "No, you're gay. Yeah. You're 100 percent gay." Like the, really? Oh, I, I, I'm that. By the way, I understand what I'm saying is super loaded, and like, and like people. You're just saying that's how it was. That's when how you were it was a kid. when yeah. we were a kid. We were like, this is no, not no, how no. you feel now. No, this I, I think there's probably. F I think now I'm a little more uh, open to the idea of gender fluidity, and yeah, and like people. I mean, it just is like bisexual is like a is a thing that I now regret ever thinking it wasn't. Yeah, like I remember I had a friend who was bisexual girl. And I was just like, just be cool with being gay. Like, yeah. that's my brain. When this is when I was like 25. Right. Like, yeah, for just, a while, people didn't think it was a thing, I think. Yeah, I was like, just why don't you just say you're gay? Just, I don't care if you're gay, but like. Yeah. And she was like, no, I, I, it, I fall in love with the person, not the sex. And I was yeah. like, I was like, I can't separate the two. Which I think there's another word for that. Is it pansexual? That's when you fall in love with. That's like what people identify as when it's like, I just fall in love with the person. I don't even think about gender. Oh. Um, yeah, I was talking to someone about this the other day where I was like, it's kind of interesting that we even have the word bisexual when the question is, what's your sexual preference? Because that means you prefer one over the other. Like, it would almost make more sense to be like, what's your sexual preference? 
and then you say straight, gay, or I don't have one. I don't more prefer, so than I don't. I don't have, I don't a, have a preference. Yeah. I'm down for whatever. Um, They're but slamming yeah. that girl Jamil. Did you see yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because she came out as queer, right? Which yeah. doesn't. I don't. What is that? It just means that you just. I don't know. I'm like. It's I'm even I even feel old talking about this stuff sometimes. Where I like feel my so young old. my younger sisters are, you know, two, four, six years older younger than me. And they I will have conversations with them where they explain things to me. And we don't have that many years between us, but they explain things to me where I'm like, Oh, okay, all right. I didn't realize okay, okay, so this means and this is why saying they is more important than pronouns and all this stuff, like things that I feel like I'm catching up on. And I'm 26, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think I think more and more, and maybe this is just living in LA, so I don't know. I can't speak for people like in the middle of the country or whatever, but I definitely feel like the everyone is coming around more to like, no, everybody's kind of on the spectrum of sexuality. So then so then define me. How come I'm not on that spectrum or am I lying to myself? I think I think a lot of it is probably like you said where you came up and like where you raised and everything. Like if I was raised differently, maybe like if I hadn't grown up in church or anything, maybe I would have, you know, dated girls in high school. You know what I mean? Like I I won't know because that was like not that was not a place I could ever go in my head when I was younger because I was so religious. Yeah, but but like does, that's so uh, it's such a weird i wish there was more like i guess we're still at like the um the discovery point of this because now we're having kids growing up like i can't deny there was a trans a transgender female thank you I, halston with the assist yeah I'm, he's seen me do this wrong a million fucking yeah. times i'm so bad at the fucking just the linguistics of oh, it oh i'm trying so hard to be careful right now if i've said anything offensive i'm so sorry <laughs> oh no no halston's gonna go through this with a fine tooth comb and pull out anything oh, okay bad. great fantastic yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Yes. oh yeah 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 halston <laughs> i need you to really clean this up yeah anything that you think might get either of us canceled just pull it the fuck out because because i would never want a child to hear this and think i had any judgment yeah on how they were feeling right yeah yeah, yeah. but 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 I am an older man where I go like I don't some of this is so new to me where you're like but then you see like there's this uh a uh, transgendered young lady mm-hmm. and you're like oh no that that is a that that is a female that is a right one hundred percent that is that kid is living her truth yes and and you can't deny that and I mean what, there was just I was just with a couple parents who's whose son was transitioning i mm-hmm. guess or daughter was transitioning mm-hmm. and you could see that they were like just so cool with it yeah i'm so glad that's happening yeah and and i if, if either of my daughters said i don't feel like a girl i want to be a boy i'd be like hey man i just want you to be happy i yeah. want you to be alive that's all i give a fuck which about. is huge i mean do you know how many parents your age don't can't even like talk about that stuff or would be like horrified or very dismissive of any of that yeah oh, like it, it's it's heartbreaking because all you want as a parent is your kid to be safe right that's it i don't yeah listen i if you I, I understand you're gonna be going through some shit i just want you to be safe yeah I, don't, I want you to be happy of course but more importantly just fucking wake up every morning and know nothing bad's gonna happen to you right yeah that's the that's the number one thing it's crazy that there are people that the it, what needs to happen is there needs to be a bridge from people that grew up the way I grew up thinking one way who still feel that way mm-hmm. to the woke community. The mm-hmm. woke community needs to create a bridge to those people to un- uh, to understand they're not taking anything away from them. Mm-hmm. That's why I think people that have these old school beliefs, I feel like they think you're taking something away from them. Right. Yeah. Well, and you you work so hard, no matter what you believe, I think, to form those beliefs and commit to them that at a certain point i'd imagine that if someone challenges them you're like this is who i've been for 20 years i decided 20 years ago this is who i am and this is how i feel about stuff and now i have to go back and re redefine everything that i decided like this was already 
a lot the first time around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah. to get here. And it's just uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable to look at what you believe and why you believe it and and adjust and change and But you did it with you did it fairly seamlessly coming out of the church and then kind of growing. I don't know that it was seamless. I mean, like I said, I still get twinges of even if, you know, I do dirty jokes on the road and I feel like the audience is older, they don't like like that as much. Um I will get really upset afterward and I know it's coming from my own stuff where I feel judged. Um, and I feel like I worked really hard to not feel that way anymore. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't think it was like one day I just woke up and was like, you know what? I'm fine with how I actually am. I think it was really a like slow, painful process up until six months ago. I think I got engaged because I was like, I mean, I was like, I got to get engaged and I got to get married on some level before my special comes out and I disappoint my whole family. So maybe this way I'll at least be like married and settled and they'll like the person I'm with and I'll be like normal and good in that way. Like that's yeah. a way to be like clean or something. No, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Cause I, and also I had moved in with him and I think on some level my, like my parents were not happy about it. My dad was not happy about it. And I think part of it was going like, see, I wouldn't just move in with anybody like that kind of thing. Yeah. See, well, well, it's so funny because I look at guys like your dad mm -hmm. who have a little more traditional view on the world and I I I quickly empathize with yeah. them and go, how how do we how do we get them to like start to open their mind? Yeah. You know, like like as opposed to attacking them, which I think is what happens the most is when someone says something a little fucked up they attack them yeah and i think i get from this place where i go hold on hold on we we can't just it's not the island with the leonardo DiCaprio where we just put them over there and we don't hear from them anymore right. <laughs> we got to bring them in yeah i don't know it yeah was... it's tough i mean you especially if you're religious you've built your whole life around this belief system and then if things challenge that, you're kind of like, all right, you're 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 chipping away at my entire belief system. And this is what keeps me comforted and on track morally and all that. And if you start to break down even pieces of that, it's going to compromise everything for me. Do you think you'll ever talk about like the stuff we're talking about now? I don't talk about on stage. I don't what really, stuff? Like we're just talking about social issues. Oh, like. like transgendered versus queer versus bisexual versus like there are some comics that see that and lean into it hard as shit yeah and i feel like like when you write and this is by the way a conversation joe and i had the other night extending off that i always feel like i'm i always i feel like any cheap joke i write although i have them in my act sometimes it's it's to get from point a to point b yeah I try to get rid of. I'd like to write jokes no one can write. I'd like to, I want my goal is to write jokes that other comics go god damn it that's a good joke. Mm -hmm. As opposed to just litter my act with a bunch of bullshit. And and there's certain subjects I stay away from. Mm -hmm. Like I I don't really talk about like it would have to be a story mm -hmm. a, a personal story that happened to me. Yes. When it comes to like if I had a transgender joke. And by the way, it probably wouldn't lean the way I think most people would want to lean it would probably be very 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 sensitive and i would want to open people's eyes and i would want yeah. to you know like i feel i feel the same way i feel like i write from a personal place and if i haven't experienced something i don't feel like i can tell jokes about it that's so fucking that's exactly how i feel yeah. if i haven't it's, if it hasn't affected me directly then i don't really have a, a dog in this fight yeah and if you're doing like social issues and topical jokes like you have to that's so hard because i mean everybody's yeah. doing bits about that on twitter snl like you have to be so careful to not step on anybody else's bits about it whereas like nobody else is gonna write a joke about something that happened with you on vacation with your daughters you know what i mean that, man i i look at like uh uh fucking bill burr and Chappelle and rock and all these guys that are just great social commentators rogan and who take a a, 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 a topic mm -hmm. like um I'm trying to think of a topic that they've all shared on but like uh like the me too i'm sure they've all yeah. had a me too a me too angle yeah i go i'm, I'm out of there i'm not i'm not right. even gonna fuck with it i'm never gonna write a joke better than burr Chappelle, rogan 
Chris Rock. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to on that on that because that's their angle. They've been leaning into that. For me, a personal story. Maybe they they don't they they haven't been doing that. But I've been doing it so long that I go. I can try to uh, tackle a social issue round and do it through a personal story. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I totally agree with that. I also, you know, with that stuff. I mean, with any joke, there's always going to be people who don't like it. But this idea that, like, if it's funny enough, you can joke about anything. It's like, not necessarily. Like, I thought Burr's last special was hilarious. I thought his Me Too jokes were so funny. And I have a friend who's been through some stuff where she was just like, I don't want to watch it. Like, I can't. Like, I don't think it's funny and I don't care for it. And I'm like, that. I mean, if if he's not making you laugh at it, no one's going to make you laugh at it. Oh, you know? some. You know, it's so funny. The the um i never under, i never understood too soon mm-hmm. like uh i but i mean i i understand the concept of it but i never yeah. i never got it personally i was like right i was like if it's funny it's funny yeah, i can yeah. laugh at anything um and and when i got mollied i didn't find any of it funny at yeah. all i found it very not funny in, in the slightest yeah um and i for the first time got too soon and then the first joke that made me laugh about it was like when you knew you're getting better over it mm-hmm. and so i was like and and everyone's like oh you should talk about that on stage i, I still think it's way too personal like it's, it's a it's a i was a victim in it and not yeah. to not to over obviously people have heard this story but like i'm not like i'm not like the champion of the story right i'm someone this shit happened to yeah so i'm like i'm like it I don't know where to take ownership in the direction of the comedy. Does that make sense? I think you're just still upset about it. I think that's... I'm not upset about it. You're I'm, not upset about it? I'm not upset about it. it I'm actually um, very cool with with everything that went down and the way it okay. handled... Uh, and I'll tell you why. Is the vulnerability was in um, my fear. Whitney Cummings told me, she goes, what sucks about this situation is you can become a meme. And if you become a meme, then they take away all the work you've ever done. And you're just the thing that shows up when people like it, it's it. The, look at Michael Jordan. Mm. Kids don't know who Michael Jordan is. They just know that he's the crying black dude. Oh, and she's like, don't don't let. And it's one of the reasons I never released the podcast. Yeah. It's one of the reasons. That's one of the reasons. The other reason is I don't think Ari's recollection of the the events isn't quite as. They weren't quite as hilarious as he remembers. Uh-huh. It's Ari playing a character of a heel to his friend who's afraid he's going to die. Yeah. And so it's not it's not as comical as everyone might remember it to be. But um but yeah, I was I was very like like I still and Joey's apparently got a murderous bit about it. Really? Yeah, because he wasn't involved. Oh, yeah. He could just show up and he showed up that day and so he's just destroying with this bit where it's I haven't seen it yet, but everyone telling me it's genius. Wow. Yeah. Do you think you'll talk about it eventually? I don't know. You know, it's so funny. I, I, there are things like the machine story. I never thought I'd talk about. Right. Um, I just was like, ah, it's not meant for stage. Yeah. Uh, and you got to do it. I don't think a theater environments where you work something like that out mm. pers- personally. Yeah. It would. I'd have to be home in the clubs for like an extended period. But yeah, I don't. I bet you will. I think it's. I think, yeah, I think too soon is a real thing and it varies for everybody. And obviously we don't feel it as often as comedians, but I've definitely felt that way with stuff where I'm like, this will be really funny. But right now it's it will upset me if I talk about it, even if I have a great bit about it. The joke's not going to work right now because everyone will sense that I'm upset and they'll focus on that. They'll be like, oh, she's angry or like, yeah, oh, if- she's, you know, whatever. But if it's just like if you talk about something like a memory then you know like i have probably like 10 minutes in the new hour about my mom dying and there some of the jokes i wrote a long time ago and they didn't work because i was like too young or i wasn't comfortable enough with it and now like i can talk about it in a way where i'm just like no like i'm fine you guys like if you're not laughing you're you're not doing anything for anybody like then she died for nothing actually if you don't (laughs) laugh so that's on you and also like i say this on stage too when people get uncomfortable i'm like look like i get that it's like a bad thing that happened but I'm saying it on stage now into a microphone, which means now it's money. So when you guys are like, oh, like what you're really saying is, oh, she made money. And like, 
do you think I'd be successful if I had a live mom? Like, <laughs> no, I'd be a creative writing major who loved myself. Like, yeah. and you'd have to stay home and be funny at each other. To find the power in the broken right? parts. Yeah. But like, you have to have some distance. And obviously that happened when I was really young, but like, you have to have some distance and maturity and you have to find the beats of it in a way that's not only sensitive to how you feel about it and not going to like trigger you, but not going to trigger anybody else yeah in a huge way like there's just so much going on so with wait, traumatic things that happen do you when you when you are with sam do you guys find that you do you write do you do you like sit down with a pen and paper and just write mm -hmm. yeah and, and does he do it that way yeah and do he you guys writes so much i mean i'm it's been like very good it's been interesting because we started seeing each other a few like a couple months before I shot mine and a few months before he shot his he shot his like a few weeks after I shot mine and then his came out you know a week ago and mine's coming out in three weeks so we've kind of been doing the exact same thing like we were both preparing to film a special filming it and then immediately trying to write new jokes and now we're in like promotion mode <laughs> so we're we're kind of doing it all together but yeah I mean it's we've both had days where i mean talk about like i just need material like we've been we've like argued where he's like that's a bit and i'm just like we're we're fighting like yeah like, yeah can we just wait a minute and now he's you know now he'll wait till the next day to pitch the bit but um do you think do you think you're writing more now yes definitely really oh my gosh yeah of course and i mean that's just dating another comedian first off god damn it um I need to have an affair with a brilliant comedian i mean it doesn't hurt i was the last <laughs> the comic i dated before like was it was like a very toxic on again off again relationship and i still got so many bits out of that i mean so much material really out of that relationship and that guy and part of it is like he was a comedian and he was going up a lot and it made me want to go up a lot and like it just you get like competitive a little bit um, in like a healthy way, not like competitive, but just like you push each other yeah. or whatever, um, which and I'm I'm one of those people that's like and I think this is probably just being a female comic thing, but I'm very like don't like I don't want to I don't want to go to shows with my boyfriend like he's like, well, we have to do shows together like we got to hang out like I want to see you when I'm in town and I'm like, yeah, but like me being I'm like, even if you weren't a comedian, I I wouldn't want you to come watch me at mm -hmm. the store you know like it has nothing to do with it has a little bit to do with the comedy stuff but mostly it's just like that's a different gear for me being yeah. like somebody's girlfriend and it's hard for me to go from like holding somebody's hand to then going on stage like i just it i can't it's gotta be in, you gotta be in work mode yeah i gotta be in work i mode. have the same problem when my kids and my wife come to a show yeah i'm like hey can you i i don't do this with other people normally yes like i do this it's the joke I used to have about uh, orgasms. I was celibate for so long. The first time I had sex with my wife, I was like, I don't normally do this with other people. That's really funny. Um, the uh, but no, but like they come and they're like, my wife will be like, uh, so do you want to get something to eat? And I'm like, hey, I, if I if if I was gonna get something to eat, I would just be hungry. I go get something to eat. Like I don't yeah. want to do dinner. I don't want to like like I, I have certain rituals about the way I behave. Yeah. When I do stand up. Yeah. And if almost even if you're taking care of me, oh. I'm used to taking care of myself. So it's just like you just kind of need to. But I, I will get and I'm very sensitive about people assuming which wouldn't happen now. But when you're first starting, you get some of this where I just people assume I'm someone's girlfriend in the green room. Oh, yeah. As opposed to a comedian. And again, doesn't really happen anymore. But when I was younger, it did. And it's like why I don't carry a purse into like inside clubs like because I feel like it makes me look like someone's girlfriend did you like tell it, me that before i think i did maybe i'll have a backpack or something like but it's all everything i do is very deliberate like if i do you know a an interview for tv and then i have to go straight to a show i have to have makeup wipes in the car like i can't go on stage in a bunch of makeup like there's really? all these different yeah there's all these different things that are just men don't really think about so if you're dating a comic who's like yeah why can't i watch your set you're like because you can't because yeah. I'm working. And it's like, but I think you're great. Why would it bother you for me to watch your set? It's like, because I'm working and I don't want to think about it's, a, it's, a, it's like parents that. Parents go, hey, I'd love to see you perform. I go, sure. And they're like, well, yeah. when are you performing next? I was like, well, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, what do you mean? I was like, I don't want you at my fucking show. Yeah, watch my I want my strangers clip. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to perform in front of people I fucking know. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. Which I've gotten better about it now with him. And like, even like writing, like there's very few people I feel like I can write with. And 
we've gotten to a point now where he's like, no, let's like run jokes by each other and stuff. And I, I can do it. But there are, there's like, you know, one or two people that I really feel like I get a lot done writing with. Um, cause I do think it's just, do you write, you mean write, writing jokes with a partner? Just like, bouncing? yeah. Like Dustin Nickerson is one of my good friends Wait, who features name? for me, Dustin Nickerson. Okay. And, uh, he and I write really well together. And so when he and I are on the road, I get a lot done with him. Cause we'll just, you know, go to a diner during the day and like bounce bits off each other. But you know, it's, there's like a degree of comfortability that I think you need. And like, not being afraid of being judged like Dustin's like my big brother so like I don't care like he'll yeah. shit on me all day and it's like mm, okay it's like a noogie like yeah. <laughs> but like somebody I'm dating and I want to think I'm great and respect me it's hard to be like is this anything no all right I'll go kill myself like it's not <laughs> it's just I don't know and he's like well I'm never judging you and I'm like yeah well I feel the same way with your stuff but it's just it's my own thing and it's something I've had to definitely like get used to it's really? not my natural state to just be like oh bounce, bounce jokes off of whoever who cares like i'm not that secure i don't think i i don't mind bouncing jokes off people um i i, I i'm a... like before their joke i mean like i should say bounce ideas because i'll bounce a joke off of somebody and be like is that good but if i just have an idea and it's not like a joke yet that's hard for me. Like bounce an idea off me, and uh, like I want to see. I've never written with anyone. Um, oh, gosh, I can't think of any. Let me see. Let me look through my phone. And Here, see I'll look through my phone. If I have any ideas that are not anything yet, that's the hard thing. You actually don't do that that much, do you? You kind of what's that? You mostly write down like lines. I, the line I wrote down the other day. It's easier to start a wave. It's easier to start the wave at an XFL game. Like I'm not a sports I, person. No, so but I don't like get that. so, have you? But no, but you're familiar with the wave, right? Yeah, like the, like so. Yeah, the waves are started by one person. Uh huh. So one per. What me and Bill watched this happen the other day, and that's why I wrote the line. It's easier to start a wave, start the wave at an XFL game, meaning something would be so difficult. I'd rather try to get twenty thousand people to do one thing than you to do one thing. So, so what a guy does, and this is it was. By the way, this wave was one of the fucking funniest. And I, I was high, so I was seeing it in a different way. Mm -hmm. This is such the fucking shittiest thing. This guy, and and now I have so much connection with this mm -hmm. because I was the guy that tried to start waves. Like that's yeah. where that my talent level. Had I not gotten discovered by Rolling Stone magazine, I would just be the guy starting waves everywhere. Like yeah, <laughs> that's that's my personality. It's my yeah. skill set. You're a human I, wave. Yeah, I'm, I'm like, are we ready? <laughs> I, I, I mean, I was. That's what I did at Florida State. I was. A, I i had that energy yeah so i'm watching this guy tell me if this isn't fucking piss you off i'm watching this guy try to start the wave now he's getting cock blocked in eight different ways so it's low attendance so there's parts of thin parts of the audience that he can't get it to go past yeah but more importantly the it's like it's almost like the mc was fucking with him because uh -huh. as soon as he'd get the wave going then the mc would go all right we're gonna start a chant when Hilarious. i say and so so his chant would negate the guy's wave guys trying to start the wave for like probably on and off 15 to 20 minutes yeah, and bill, you can't bill and i are watching this at the same time bill and i are watching this guy and and we're we're rooting for him <laughs> you ready for this this guy's sitting in 130 section 132 uh-huh the guy he's on the corner seat the edge the aisle seat of section 132 the guy in the aisle seat of 131 starts a wave going the other direction <laughs> takes Hilarious. all his energy right and goes i'm gonna do it the other way and he gets the wave to go around and you can watch this guy was so upset <laughs> that this guy stole his wave and then it got all the way back around and he didn't even stand up he's like no fuck your wave <laughs> i was watching this so intently at, at, at a fucking football game that i was like that the line i came up with is it's easier to start the wave start i i'm, I'm the words this dad bob fucks your mom that's a good one we got that from the other day um uh uh okay here's an idea you ready okay okay so let's workshop this joke okay okay i think i have it um the concept is if you've been married for a long time the best thing to do is get your wife a tinder account don't let her know but you sign her up for tinder and read what guys say they want to do to your wife It'll really make you fall back in love with her. That's 
really great. You like that? I do like that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So then, okay, so that's the premise. What I no. like that. I like that as long as you don't turn it into something shitting on your wife. I think. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. I think the angle of it'll make you fall in love with her again. Like, oh wow, these guys want to. Okay. Oh my yeah. god, he'd do what? To, I'm gonna do that to her tonight. Yeah. Fuck him. <laughs> she doesn't know about it is yeah. there, someone would send it to her someone would be like someone's using your yeah. picture like oh, someone's using my picture on really yeah 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 wow someone's how are they doing me. with it uh i guess i've, had, I've had actually a couple people ask to use my picture um, really w- this one girl's using a picture of me and her on there oh okay and, so, and she and and it's, it's funny that like the guys that are like dude how do you not swipe right on a girl that likes you like, oh that's... and so you're like oh that's smart that You're is. getting like my sensibility type guys. Yeah. Good guys, I guess, ultimately. But a guy just using yours is pretty fucked up because oh, no. you're oh, famous. I've never seen anyone use mine. Okay. Yeah, oh, no, I thought no. you no. mean like, I was, I was saying on... like just using your picture. Because I know people who aren't well known who they're, they'll find out people are using their photo online just to like catfish people. Oh. Yeah, that happens. This podcast is also brought to you by Fiverr. Let's talk about finding the right freelance talent for your project and or business, which I am doing all the time. I know that finding the right freelancer can be time consuming, frustrating, and outright expensive. Where do you go to find the talent? How much is it going to cost? How are you going to be certain that they can deliver? Well, thanks to Fiverr, finding the right freelancer doesn't have to be a struggler. Struggle. I've been looking for a copywriter or not a copywriter, a graphic designer nonstop. And so sometimes I will just throw it out there on social media. Hey, I'm looking for a guy to do this. You get back the artwork. You like it. And as soon as you like it, they know they got you on the line and they go, uh, it's 1500 bucks. And you're like, God, never mind." And the guy's like, how about, and you're like, no, I thought we were going to, I should have just gone to Fiverr. Fiverr's marketplace helps you get more done with less. Fiverr connects businesses with freelancers who offer hundreds of digital services, including graphic design, copywriting, web programming, film editing, and much more. Find what you're looking for instantly. You can search by the service, the deadline, the price, read reviews, and more. You'll know exactly what you're paying for up front. No negotiating needed. 24-hour customer service and quality talent that you can count on. Sellers have worked with some of the most influential brands in the world. Finding the talent for your project has never been easier. Review sellers' ratings, buyer feedback, and select the right freelancer based on your budget. That is the key right there. Take five and check out Fiverr and get 10% off your first order by using my code BERTCAST. It's so easy. Don't waste any more time and get the service you deserve by going to Fiverr, F-I-V-E-R-R.com. Use the promo code BERTCAST, Fiverr. It starts here. Isla mixed up catfishing and blackmailing the other day. Oh, yeah? Yeah, she was like, yeah, these kids in the class. So these kids in the class, this, by the way, is a, this is a premise. Yeah, I was about this to say. A, this is a premise. Yeah. So these kids in in her class, or one of her teachers is like, a, I mean, she wants to be a musician or something, or maybe an mm-hmm. actor. So they've got like a public Facebook page. But these kids in the class went on to his Facebook page through their mom's account and was reading his personal shit. And they're like fucking falling out laughing, right? They're like, oh my God, look, can you imagine if you had insight to the personal views of your, of your teachers, like your, their life, their life, and you could look at their friends. So then these kids created a fake account (gasps) of this woman and hit the dude up like, oh my God, I love your music or whatever it is, music or acting or whatever it is. And they're, and Isla said they're blackmailing him. And I was like, they're fucking blackmailing him? And she was like, yeah, it's bad, Dad. Like, I don't know if I should say something. And I was like, hold on. Do not get involved. I was like, hang on. What are they trying to get out of him? And they're like, she's like, nothing. They just, they just, and I was like, I think you mean catfishing. And she goes, what's that? I go, when you take a picture of a, like a beautiful woman in, and then you pretend that you like them. And she goes, oh, yeah, they're doing that. And I was like, Jesus Christ, Isla. <laughs> Get your fucking words together. She heard the other day, she heard my mom My mom had a Cuban sandwich, and Isla goes, disgusting. And I was like, what? She goes, that is horrible. Where Can you even, is that real? And I was like, yeah. She goes, oh, my God. What humans are they using? I said, a hu- Cuban, not a human <laughs> sandwich. So, um, but yeah, so, uh, but I was, that fucking blew me away that these kids were catfishing their teacher. That's pretty fucked up. 
Kids the are. fact that you're just like, whew, all right, glad it's not blackmailing. It's like, it's still pretty bad. Fucking catfishing a teacher. Yeah. Can you imagine? Yeah. Can you imagine how, I mean, I know my friends growing up. Would definitely do that. A hundred percent. Yeah. One hundred percent. Oh my God. How hard do you think it is to be a teacher? So hard. My friend's a teacher and um, she's posted about it before. She's like, oh my God. She's like, my kids found my Instagram. Like, but it'll just, even if they have a private one, it just takes one of them to like get in and then they can just post everything. So she has to be careful like not to, cause you know, teacher my age is going to go online and like bitch about their job and you got to be so careful with that bitch stuff. Bitch about your job or post something personal. You don't even yeah. think about that. Like, Going through a rough patch right now. Yeah. Your and kids those... show up. They're like, hey, be quiet during the test. They're like, your wife left. Like, that's <laughs> so rough. Quiet the way your dad never paid attention to you? <laughs> <laughs> Who told you that? <laughs> Who fucking told you that? <laughs> Where's your wedding ring? <laughs> <laughs> rough night. Did you sleep on the couch again last night? <laughs> huh? What? I heard your cat's dead. <laughs> Fuck your cat. <laughs> you Profile would... picture changed. It's just you alone. <laughs> <laughs> I would never want to be a teacher now with oh, social media. With social media is fucking. Yeah. Although if I was a teacher, I don't know that I'd be on social media. Would you be on social media if you didn't have to be for this job? No. Yeah, that's how we I would, would feel. never be on social media. Yeah, right. I use it like Leanne does. She never. She has no clue how Instagram works. Like, I, yeah, I would never. I would never do social media. Yeah. It's so funny because I. I I'm, I'm, I feel like I feel like I'm uh, I'm fairly fairly astute with social media, mm -hmm. and there are things that will rub me wrong, mm -hmm. that I that bother me that I don't really like. There's this guy, um, I'm hesitant to give out his hashtag because I don't want to cause him grief. Mm -hmm. um, but he he has I won't give out his hashtag, but he has a hashtag like uh, like um uh. Let's tear it up. Mm -hmm. Hashtag let's tear it up. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and what he's done is he has a really nice car and he has gotten it wrapped as a tribute to Co Kobe and Gigi, mm -hmm. the, his daughter. Mm -hmm. And it's a tribute to them. Black Mamba on there. Mamba Academy. Big murals of them on the sides and on the hood. But he also has his hashtag let's tear it up all over there. Mm. So And then he takes the car to the Staples Center parks in front of the staple center and people are taking pictures with it mm. and he's like yeah this is I'm not, i shouldn't do an accent of the guy because you'll find out who this guy is quickly mm. but he's like this is what i do I i'm here for the people you know let them take pictures let them take pictures that's all right let's celebrate their lives and i'm like no you're capitalizing on the yeah. death of two people yeah. you are trying to while literally on their grave capitalize on them yeah and it's i won't i was drunk last night i almost fucking lit him up and yeah. then I was like, don't fucking, don't get involved. What? Yeah. He's a gross person. Yeah, that's super, that's super gross. But like I see, and and people are taking pictures with it. Like, so cool that you did this. And I'm yeah. like, you don't see that. Anytime I, there's a hashtag, once there's a hashtag, like I'm out. If there were no hashtag, I'd be like, all right. Let's, yeah. I had, I was going to do something with homeless people. And uh, uh, this, it was this great taco company. Um, I forget the name of them, but they're uh in la and they do this thing where they for every taco i think on tuesdays maybe every taco you buy um they donate a, ta a taco for homeless people oh, okay. and they take them out to a shelter and, and donate tacos i think that's how it works i'm not certain but yeah but anyway i said how about this how about we do i'll, I'll do something with you guys and i'll buy like fucking i'll buy four thousand tacos and then you match oh they, they they donate a taco so I'll, i go i'll buy four thousand tacos then you match it you make four thousand tacos and i'll drive them down to the homeless shelters and i'll give them out to the homeless shelters mm -hmm. and my brain goes yeah and i'll and i'll videotape it and i'll put it on social media mm -hmm. and then and then everyone will know and then i'm in the middle of this i was like okay i'm, I'm already out this is horrible right. just donate the fucking money to a homeless shelter yeah i mean but you could also make the argument like oh by filming it and doing that more people see you doing that and then it inspires other people to donate and do stuff like that so there's that's i think is different yeah. than wrapping your car maybe maybe i think it's a little different it's a little different if but you're it, but going look i'm doing this you guys should also do this i definitely am afraid that if i did something charitable charitable it, you could maybe see 
the maybe, cracks maybe, in it. Yeah, maybe see the cracks in the thing. Like, yeah. wait, hold on, bro. Are you doing this for you? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I just, I think it depends on how you go about it. Like, if you're just, if you're doing like a call to action yeah. where it's like, this is how you can donate to this cause. This is how you can get involved. Yeah. That's just visibility for it. But if you are doing it as just like, what a, what a fun Thursday I had. And a great guy I am. Like that's a little different. I think it's so, all about execution. So wait, so Isla, so Isla is a part of this, um, a, a, like a nonprofit acting group. They do acting in here, mm -hmm. and so we had you know some extra money for, for that was earmarked for charity, mm -hmm. and um, and so I said, hey, why don't why don't we give? Why don't we donate to this? this group so that they can keep continuing so these this these husband couple, husband and wife do everything themselves they pay for mm -hmm. everything that we, we we pay to have our kids in it but they're not making a ton of money from this they're doing it because they love acting and they love kids right mm -hmm. so he said isla when next time she's in town i won't say her name but next time she's in town she's gonna text us when she's in this part of the neighborhood and then when she texts us that's when you should go give her the money you should do it isla because it's your acting she went sure so she's in town she, she's in our area we text her she said great i'll stop by so leanne and i are like let's let isla do this yeah <laughs> so it's three thousand dollars okay just oh, wow. three thousand dollars and we give it to isla and a check <laughs> she comes over and she goes hey and we're like hey we thought we'd let you guys talk and she's like oh she's like isla are you excited for uh the next play and she goes yeah she was like and what what part were you thinking about and she goes uh moon face i think or pie face moon face it's i forget the name of the, the she's like really and isla goes yeah and then slides the check over to her <laughs> doesn't say anything and she goes what's that for and she goes that's for you and she opens it and she's like wow isla and now leanne and i are listening to this going like what the fuck is she doing she goes that's a lot of money what's this for she goes it's just for you and i she's like okay and we're like it just looked like she bribed this lady like she was like Hey, here's three thousand dollars. I want that part. And that we is walked, so funny. We walked in. And we're like, Isla, do you, you got to tell her what it's for. And she goes, Oh, it's for you guys. We're like, No, what? Tell her what it's for, Isla. Yeah. And she's like, I, I don't know what. Like, she's like, What the fuck? I, yeah, yeah. It, it was so. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's really, really funny. Yeah. See, I, I, I can't run bits by Leanne. Really? Why? She just kind of. She's like, Huh? She's like, I don't get it. She's like, Ah. Are they all about how you wish you could cheat on her? I don't wish I could <laughs> cheat on her. <laughs> I don't. If I wanted to cheat on her, I'd just cheat on her. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I don't wish I could. Although cheat Although at on this her. point, wouldn't you be nervous to cheat on her? Being I would never famous? cheat on her. I, would I know you never would. I would this never. I would never cheat on her because I t I've, I'm sure I've told you this or I've said it on stage. I had, I cheated on every girl I ever dated. Everyone. Really? Oh, everyone. I didn't know that. Yeah. 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 I, I love cheating. It was so much fun. Really? Oh, oh my God. It's the funnest. You're the time you'll ever have in your life. Like, oh my god! Oh, your heart races like it never raced. But before. you're so anxious. You wouldn't like feel like guilty and oh, stressed. No, no, no. And... I felt guilty and stressed. But and in the yeah. moment, it was really fun. I've been. I got walked in on by uh, what? Yeah, I got walked in on. And that by, part wasn't fun. Ooh, wow! Or it was That's fun. a crazy feeling. It's almost like free fall. It's like <sighs> it, your heart races and you're, and I, I couldn't stop smiling and laughing because <gasps> I was so nervous. I was so. It's the oh craziest. That's like one of the worst things that's happened to that girl, I'm sure. It's the, no. I Walking in on her no. boyfriend, sleeping with someone else, and Jeez. laughing hysterically. No, I, that's I a nightmare. I wasn't laughing hysterically. I was just like like a nervous, like a, oh, uh, oh uh, like a nervous. Did it you stop? So, it was so. Or did you keep thrusting? No, no, no. I wasn't even having sex. We were oh. just hanging out on the couch. Oh, but okay. I thought it was mid clear. Sex. It was clear. Oh, okay. That makes more sense. And, sh but. I and I and not that I never I never just I I don't know I I was very in love with Leanne and like so there was a moment where um she um she dumped me and I got and I I fought to get her back and I was on Outpost Canyon or Outpost Drive jogging and the sun was setting and I made a pact with God I was like right you're like if you let me I have go, you let me have this back I won't fuck this up I'll never yeah. cheat on her never anything like that. So I never really thought about cheating on her. And then one day we have two girls. We have the two girls where right. our cats and dogs in the bed. Mm -hmm. And it's just the perfect fucking morning. And we were all laughing. 
hysterically and I was like, this is what life's about. Like if yeah. I, and if I had a, if I had a lie, I wouldn't be able to fully enjoy this moment. Yeah. And I was like, I don't want a lie in my life. And, yeah. I, and I was like, I can, I, I'm, she lets me do a lot of fucking things. Yeah. Like she doesn't have a problem with strip clubs, doesn't have a problem with drinking, doesn't have a problem with drugs, quite mm -hmm. honestly. All of that I can do. She tells me, go call up Doug Stanhope, go to Stanhope's house for a week. Yeah. You know, go back in the day. She'd be like, go skiing with Ari or go to do this with your friends. Have fucking fun. Yeah. But that's the one thing. And she, and, and I just made a decision. I remember she got up to make chocolate chip pancakes and I was in the bed and the girls were down with her. It was when we were in our loft. And I was just laying there. I think we were in our loft. And I was like, oh, this is perfect. And I was like, and I have control of not fucking this up. Yeah. All I got to do is anytime it is offered, just say no. I don't do that. Yeah, I don't do that. I don't, yeah, I don't cheat on my wife. It's yeah. super, super, it's super easy. Yeah. It's easier and than cheating. And now I'm on, I'm, I'm, so, I'm so on such a fucking run. Like I've got, yeah. I've gotten, I've got what, like 18 years under my belt that I've <laughs> only been with one person. It's fucking awesome. Yeah. And she doesn't care that I go to strip clubs. And so like you go to a strip club, get a lap dance. Leanne has, could give two shits. Yeah. I don't think she's fully aware of what happens in a lap dance, but that's fine. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think she's, I think if she saw that, I'm dance, like, I've had a lap dance and it is too much for <laughs> they're me. Pretty aggressive. Some yeah, places. I'm like, Ooh, this is, I've called quits is, on, la on lap dances. You've called quits. On I was it? like, I, I was at this place in Cleveland Christie's and I was like, okay, I think I'm, you're, you're trying to get me to cheat on my yeah, wife. I'm yeah, out of here. This is, you know, this is more than about money. Yeah. This is what the fuck. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We, I went to the Magic Mike show in Vegas with Kelsey and Delaney, and they were so into it. They're like, this is the best show ever. They've gone multiple times. And I was like, they should let you wear a sign if you don't want this to happen to you. It's because it's assault. It's full, like, it is, I mean, what I, I just didn't know what happened in there. Oh. <laughs> I thought, I thought, have you been to the show? Mm -mm. The Magic Mike show? I was a male stripper for a day. Oh, For a TV okay. show. And it is literally painting their face with your cock yeah like it is but here's the thing magic mike is a show so i thought it was going to be like thunder from down down under which i also haven't been to but from what i hear is like unless you get pulled up on stage nobody's coming into the crowd to get on top of you yeah. but at magic mike they they make the rounds around really? the whole room oh my gosh they touch everybody and judy got us good seats and kelsey was like getting married so we're like we're just a lot of attention is coming into that box and i was yeah. like just the box we were sitting in, not anything else. <laughs> I was and about to say. It's, yeah. both, we got both their Holton VIP box like, seats. Holy shit. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. We no, all, no, no. They all call theirs VIP boxes. But yeah, they're just, they had to just watch me like tense up. Just like, I, w I didn't know. I was like, how do we, is there a section like that's the opposite of the splash zone? Where can we go? <laughs> Where's base? Because <laughs> I'm, this is not, what I'm do not they comfortable describe with what this. they do? They just like grind on you and stuff. Like it's and they, a they'll like rub their dicks in your face. They're, I mean, yeah, they're like on. They're, I don't. That I would have been more comfortable with than like you are on top of me in a chair, like breathing in my ear. Like that is so. That is so much. Yeah. But that's like guess what a lap dance is. I don't know. It wasn't uh, my thing. I was not comfortable. The two lap dances. I've, I'm sure I've talked about these, but this my two favorite lap dances I've ever gotten. Uh -huh. Recently, we went. At the end of this last tour, the end of the fall tour, uh -huh. I took my axe, my opening axe that I had with me, and our tour bus driver, Ron, mm -hmm. my cousin, Andrew, we went to a strip club. Mm -hmm. And um, I was more, I, I had an epiphany one time in New Orleans where uh, lap dances were $20. And I took these kids, these kids that uh, one of their dad, I'm friends with one of their dads, and they're all college kids. Okay, and I was I like, kids? Them, yeah, no, like, they're like college kids, but <laughs> yeah. friends with one of the kids' dads, and I took them all to this strip club with, I think, my opening act and my tour manager at the time, and I just took out $200, which my whole life has been a ton of money. Mm -hmm. But for at this point, I was like, 200 bucks isn't going to break the bank account. Yeah. Took out 200 bucks, and I just kind of spread it around to all the, the dancers and said, hey, why don't you just hang out in this corner with these guys for the next couple songs? Mm -hmm. So we had like five girls and they're not going anywhere and it was funny shit. And mm -hmm. it was just like cool, right? So I, I so then we went to the strip club with my all the guys this last time and I did the same thing and 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 I took out some money and I said, everyone just have a good time. And then they're like, what about you? And I was like, you know, it's kind of weird to get a lap dance when you're 
uh, not not famous, but when people know you who you are, because then yeah. they take pictures of you. Sometimes it's like yeah, and and there people were taking pictures in this place, and I was like, I'm not gonna get one. Yeah, I got two lap dances last night, right? <laughs> so this was the best one. So I'm talking to the owner of the place, uh-huh. and we're just bullshitting. And this girl comes up, she's like, Oh my god, she's in street clothes. She goes, I'm such a huge fucking fan. If I had known you were coming in, I would have asked to stay on for the rest of the shift. I was like, Oh, I'm sorry. And I go, Well, here, let me uh. How much is lap dance? And they said, you know, 20 bucks. I said, well, here's 20 bucks for tell everyone I gave you a lap dance. And she goes, I would love to give you a lap dance. And I said, okay. I said, can I tell you the only lap dance I've ever wanted in my life? And I've had a joke about this. I've had a Uh joke about this for so long. I feel like women in strip clubs are not wearing enough clothes to make it sexy. Right. I want to see a woman get street clothes naked. Like, I want her to still have an indent where her belt was. I want to see her take socks off. I want to see her untie her shoes. I want to see see, her untie her shoes. I want to see her take a bra off. Like, take her bra off. When you normally have sex with your wife, those are the things you see. Like, there's still an indent from where her belt is. Yeah. I want to, and and it was fucking the middle of winter, and she had a fucking winter coat on, a scarf, and a hat. And I go, start top to bottom. (laughs) And then she was like, done. She was laughing so hard throughout it that the allure of the stripper, right? The power of the stripper was subtracted. Yeah. And we were two humans in a room. It was the funniest fucking thing. She got to a certain place and she goes, she goes, oh my God, my, my panties and my bra don't match. And I was, uh-huh. by the way, we're not in a room. We're out in the open. Right, right. We're not I in a room. Say- we're not in a room. It was out in the open. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and it was so funny that she didn't even really give me a lap dance. Mm-hmm. She just got halfway naked and was like, I can't fucking do this anymore. Right. And we both laughed hysterically. That's a bit. That's yeah. a, you oh, did a sketch. I did a sketch. You acted out one of your bits in real life. Oh, and then at the end of the night, uh, this this uh, girl went to give me a lap dance. And I was sitting down talking to someone. Mm-hmm. She came over and she said, hey, our boss says, I need to give you a lap dance. And I was like, oh, you don't have to do that. She goes, ah, kind of. It's the end of the night. And yeah. I was like, okay. She's and like, I, I like, kind of have to. Yeah. My boss said so. No, she's like, yeah, my boss told me to come over here. And she's like, I'll just sit with you. And I was like, that's fine. She's like, I can also just give you a lap dance. And I was like, okay. I go, well, so what are the rules? She goes, well, I mean, between me and you, there's no rules for, for you. I said, <laughs> I said, excuse me? She goes, yeah, you can do anything. And I went, anything I want? And she goes, anything. So I grabbed my phone and I FaceTime my buddy Cowhead and I go, can he be in the lap dance? And so she you just held like, up your phone? Yeah, I just she... held up my phone and he didn't answer. <laughs> he didn't answer. I was like, if you're going to say no rules, the la- I'm not thinking sex stuff. I'm right. thinking, how do I break a rule in a strip club? And oh take my God. And, and a FaceTime is definitely a rule breaker. Yeah. But yeah, it was, uh, <laughs> I guess growing up in Florida too, strip clubs were like kind of second nature to us right yeah Wait, where did you get a lap dance in a strip club i didn't i went to a magic mic oh, show just magic mic. and you they didn't... dance on you oh yeah like, yeah so would you be upset if sam got a, stri- a lap dance i don't know i'm would not you? sure if I he was know, like if he was like we were all out bert i think it would depend if he just went by himself i think that'd be weird <laughs> i think i'd feel weird if a if a boyfriend of mine went by himself if it was like a group. very very creepy right if that's he goes, yeah hey, what did you do for lunch he was like well i got a lap dance and then grabbed a burger and you're like wait what and he's like yeah. oh, i just wanted a lap dance yeah yeah that's weird to me like if you do it and you're on the road and nobody's with you it's like okay but if you're like if at I've a bachelor that. party that's like a different thing i wonder if i've ever done that got to go to lap dance by yourself i don't think i've ever done that yeah i think that's a weird move if you're i mean i don't know i shouldn't pass judgment on people's choices but if that that would bother me if I was in a relationship with you and you went out and got a lap dance alone. Like if, if you guys were getting ready to go to bed and he's like, I'm going to run out real quick. I'll be back. <laughs> like it was CVS or something. <laughs> like uh, I'm going to go get some uh, chapstick and just like a quick lap dance, just like 20 minutes. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think a lot of people do like the bachelor party thing. I mean, I definitely, when we did that magic mic thing, that was like basically like a bachelorette thing for Kelsey. And I told my boyfriend at the time, I was like, was that weird that I did that? Does that make you uncomfortable? And he was like, well, it's too late now, is kind of like what he said. And I was like, okay, well, I didn't enjoy it, if that makes you feel better. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. I, you know. Leanne got a lap dance at Christina Pajinsky's bachelorette party. Yeah. And she called me. She goes, hey, they have, they have a male stripper here. I was going to get a lap dance. Are you cool with that? And I was like, yeah. oh, were we supposed to be calling each other? <laughs> I was unaware that, uh, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Yeah. Please, by all means. I was like, I don't think you're gonna like it. Yeah. She's and like, she what do you mean? Like and she goes, I go, I I've seen 
I know what a lap dance is, and I know what a male lap dance is because I was a male stripper for a day. Yeah, and I go, you will not enjoy it because I yeah. know you. I know what I know what you enjoy. What's brand friendly for you? This is brand not- friendly. That's the thing. It's not my Magic Mike was not brand friendly for me. No, I was like, I don't care for this. I'm I'm a mag- I'm always shocked that there are women that are into that. Male strippers? Yeah, like that. They're like like that. Like how I mean, is that different than a guy being into female strippers? But it's that's so but. I th- I think the 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 shift is in guys have a hard time getting girls always so to go to a place where that currency the currency is is even mm. and and all you have to do is go hey and they go yeah whereas mm. women they always can get any guy almost I mean I guy- don't think that's true I don't think women can get any guy but but if but yeah guys if if you wanted have a guy with- to sh- rub his dick in your face you probably wouldn't have He'd to do throw it for it. the story. You, even you probably if wouldn't have to throw a ugly. stick without hitting one of those right. guys. But like, but a guy to get a woman to do that is very, that's a tougher right. negotiation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like for a guy that's like kid in a candy store, a woman's like an adult in a candy store. Like, well, okay. Right. Does that make sense? I guess that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's never been, I feel like I can't even speak to it because it's just so not my thing yeah that i i worry about coming off frigid uh but it's just for me it makes me uncomfortable so i don't know yeah did it are there any jokes in this in this new special where you go where you're like oh i'm pushing the pushing the boundaries for what i like on that um pushing the boundaries for what i like 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 when you talk about sex jokes yeah um yeah i mean i don't know i do i feel like it it's I did take out, I I took out a joke that I'm still doing on stage that's very much like, this is what I like in bed because I didn't want, I, w- I didn't feel ready to have that out there yet. Yeah. I felt uncomfortable knowing that like, because I've had, you know, people come up after shows where I did that joke and like make a callback joke to it. You know, when you say something on stage and then people go up and go, oh, and you go, oh shit, did I say that in front of you? Yeah. Um, I didn't want that in the special. I didn't feel ready for that. But everything else is like, I have sex jokes, but I also have a bunch of jokes about being abstinent when I was younger. Like, talk about misrepresenting yourself. There was a friend of mine who saw me a few years ago who goes, you have a lot of sex jokes now. And I said, not really. And she's like, yeah, but I know you and I know how careful you are about that and how much of a relationship person you are. She's like, the jokes that you're doing right now sound like you have a lot of casual sex. And I was like, oh, okay. And she's like, and that's just not who you are. So I'm just saying you know that's how it comes across God, that's a and great that's fucking friend great fucking friend erica spira great new york comic and so i added i, all I these know things. erica Spiro. yeah yeah she's great she's fucking awesome she's fucking awesome she's so great god damn it hey er- erica you want to come out on the road with me and tell me what i'm doing wrong honestly yeah jesus yeah she it was like the best note ever she was with me in see you were my Syracuse. exact opposite was that you would tell me jokes where i would be nervous of jokes you're like no it's not as bad as you think yeah and and you're like i actually it's a good joke so stick with it but yeah. yeah you need people like that to be honest with you joe did that to me the other day it was like yeah. it's a joke's coming off rough right exactly and sometimes you just need to somebody else did that oh i did i did some joke that i think i had to drop but or maybe i changed it to say like oh i wasn't like that cute growing up or something where i was doing some joke about like something my parents said about my looks when i was a kid and somebody said that where they're like you're really like you're you're beautiful like people don't get that joke like you need to set that up better or something because people are going like no you're pretty and uh i think other people see you much more clearly than you see yourself so much of the time because all of us are just walking around like being the people we thought we were when we were 12 (laughs) that we never got out of um but yeah she made me like go back in this special i think all the sex jokes i have there's like one line that was a riff on the road that I j- that just crushes and I thought was really funny. It's a little dirtier than for me. It's not really who I am, but I thought it was so funny that I kept it. But there was another there was like another line in there that was like a dirty line that Sam watched my hour before I filmed it. He was like, that's he's like, it's funny. It's a funny line, but it's just not really who you are. And I thought that was true. And I cut that one. But there was another one I felt that way about that. I was just kind of like. This is just funny though. It's this is obviously silly and a joke, 
Um, but yeah, a few years ago, I would have never done that. And like the new hour I'm doing now is like very personal to the point where I'm like, man, I, I hope this special does well so that people coming out to see me know me well enough to think this is all really great. I mean, it's all working right now, but I'd like to go even deeper with some of it. And there's a certain, uh, I think you, you can probably do that more easily when everyone is a fan in the crowd, even at the show, like people coming out at those tapings, those were like people who knew who I was and knew what they were signing up for, which was super nice. I was less nervous to do that than I was to do the 15 minutes on the comedy lineup. Oh, yeah, of course, right? Yeah, because you're like, oh, I'm going to go out on the stage for the first time. I didn't pick any of this. And then for your hour, you're like, I've been, I picked all of this. I picked <laughs> yeah. my outfit. I picked the lighting. I picked oh, yeah. the theater. And like, this is great. Who directed it? Uh, Marcus Raboy. Okay. So he's done so many people. He did Whitney's. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah. I think, he, I think he did Sam's first one. His oh, Comedy really? Central one, yeah. It was really great. It was really beautiful. It it, it looks great. Yeah. It looks really good. The um what's your favorite joke in there? Um What's the joke you're most proud of? Probably the one in the trailer. Did you watch the trailer? I didn't watch the trailer. Okay. I just watched the beginning. The trailer, I don't know if you ever saw it. It's that joke about I mean, should I do it or should I just I don't uh, know. Uh no, no, just tell me the joke. Tell me the joke so I can so I can witness it and then go, okay. Oh, that's the, the one, one that I'm proudest of is the the gobstopper joke. Gobstopper joke? Uh huh. And it's a sex joke. Oh yeah, but I think yeah. One of my favorite jokes, one of my favorite jokes years ever was the uh, uh, putting a jacket over a. a oh yeah. A, a, yeah. Over Wearing a, a uh, getting a Halloween getting a twenty something guy to wear a condom is like trying to get a feel it little kid to wear a Halloween put a jacket on over their Halloween costume. Yeah, that's the one that probably gets quoted to me the most, and that's the one that pissed my dad off the most. He was like, he told me he found it disturbing, and he doesn't know what I'm doing out there, and he doesn't want to know. Jesus. Like. I mean, it was it was rough. It was a rough conversation. He's like, I don't understand why you needed to do that. I was like, that joke made me so much money. Do you know how many rooms that's gotten me into? Do you know like deals that that's made me yeah. like that's I and there's no way to explain that. Your dad may not be the best judge of comedy, right? Well, he it's it, you know it's he's, it, you don't want to watch what, your daughter talk about having sex. I get it. Yeah, I wonder if your dad would watch me and go, now that's what I'm talking about. Uh, I can't I can't imagine he would. Yeah, I don't know. His wife I farted during oral sex. Oh, yeah, yeah, probably not. I think he'd like Sebastian. Oh, everyone likes Sebastian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone. I watched. Did you go to the forum to see him? I didn't. I wasn't in town. Oh, it's fucking. Yeah, impressive. I watched your stories. Though it was cool. That was so cool when he brought up Judy. Yeah, I thought that was awesome. It's never happening with me. Ah! Like I don't care how big I get. That <laughs> spotlight is mine. Yeah, fucking come on, Judy, <laughs> stay in the back. <laughs> I love Judy. She's like, she really is like the reason my career is going as well as it is i think like oh hold on you're the reason your career is going as well it's as a it team is. effort but it's you know. no it is you it is you and judy would tell you that judy can't mm-hmm. judy can give you direction and insight on where you're going and what to do and, I, and trust me i'm with her i find her very valuable i was mm-hmm. just sat in a meeting for fucking two hours with her where i thought to myself i'm not listening but i don't really need to right now yeah because i know everyone else in the room is yeah and i was like all i like i just have so much on my fucking plate right now yeah that i'm like that i'm like i can't i can't handle all of it yeah and and you trust in that moment that she knows what she's doing but it's you're you're amazingly like supremely talented one of the most talented comics i know and without it without a doubt i mean for christ's sake our our friendship our branding was not meant to happen no someone like you is never supposed to be around someone like me <laughs> and i fucking forced it because i was like she's so fucking funny i want i do i want to be around a great comic uh-huh and i and i it's true i i it's so funny uh i've had you and sam on my podcast recently more than anyone yeah and and i just and i was like god damn it like i i just was looking at it today and i was like I was like, I should have called Sam and had Sam because I know he's got the special out. Yeah, I should get Sam on the podcast. Well, he's in he's in town a lot this month. Is he? I did it. Um, I, no, I just mean he's out here a lot and he's oh, yeah, oh. He, yeah he's out in L.A. a lot. Uh, which in the beginning I was just like, well, that'll never happen because he like doesn't love it out here. He's like so New York, but he's he's been out here most of this month. Really? Um, yeah, like he's got meetings all day today, but I just you know I just saw him for like thirty minutes in between all our different stuff. Um. But yeah, he's around. He'd totally do it. Yeah. yeah. Have you watched his special yet? No. I, it's I, so good. I started watching it the other night 
-hmm. and then i was like and then i was like oh wait this is the full special mm -hmm. i was like i shouldn't do this on my phone i'll throw it up on the oh, tv oh yeah put it on Absolutely. the tv come out to the man cave open a bottle of wine mm -hmm. get on the treadmill yeah maybe take a hit of a joint yeah it's so good walk, walk four miles walk five miles and watch <laughs> Sam's special yeah it's like it's crazy i mean i was like looking through the youtube comments because you know you can always go through someone else's instead of your own and uh it's just oh, everyone's yeah. just like how the fuck like this guy is insane like this him guy's and so mark good. norman like, are getting the respect they deserved yeah. a long time ago yeah they've been they've the two of them are so incredibly talented mm -hmm. that i think everyone knew it and saw it and tried to put them over and it just it just i don't know for, for whatever reason it just happens when it happens yeah yeah it's i mean his writing is like so tight it's crazy i mean i didn't have like i didn't know him at all but i knew he was a great comic and so like getting getting those types of guys to say like i watched your late night set and it was really great feels like better than anything yeah you're and, like wow do you know your way into my bedroom right. <laughs> <laughs> you like my comedy you like my Let's comedy start there. oh my gosh um but yeah like he's so like prolific and great and hard on himself which i also like because oh i can't i wish i had the ego of those guys who are mediocre comics but feel like they destroy it all the time right yeah i'm like i'm like what the fuck How i do you... don't know how they people who are like i crushed and you're like did you have you ever or people who are successful <laughs> who that? that believe they deserve it yeah i'm like I i'm like wait how do you not like I, I'm consistently feeling like everything's going away tomorrow. Oh, me too. That I need to work harder than the next guy. Yes. And 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 I'm just like I can't shut my brain off from comedy. I think about it 24 hours a day. If mm -hmm. you want to put me on tour, I go on tour in a fucking heartbeat. Yeah. I can't. I hate that I call in for spots because I'm supposed to be spending time with my family. Yeah. But then I go in and I work. Every, I'm at the improv and the store and then and I'm like just slow the fuck down. Uh, tonight I'm not. Uh, this week I'm not doing any spots. That's nice. Because I'm like, I'm not, I, I, was, I think Well, it's I'm, like, and how do you write when you're just on stage every single night? Like, at a certain point, that's not helpful. You gotta live a life. Yeah, you have to have stuff to actually say and talk about. And, yeah, I don't know. I mean, he and I were going to try to, like, we were like, oh, we'll take a vacation after Christmas. And then we just ended up canceling it and, he's and working. Like, he's like, you want to go to Columbus? <laughs> right. Cause... No, we were. We were going to do something. And then we were like, you know what? This just, we got to work. We got to write new jokes before much, our specials how, come out. How much How much new material do you have right now? I mean, I have I have a new hour. I have an that's, hour that's not the special. That's great. Yeah. So I did. I how went long did to, it take you to write that? I mean, I started writing stuff before. Yeah. Me obviously. too. Yeah. Because I'm like, I can't. And then there was, again. Because you're bored out of your fucking mind with your old so stuff. So bored. And then there was like maybe 10 to 15 minutes of stuff maybe closer to 10 that i didn't do um in the special but i kept i think maybe like 15 minutes i'm like this stuff is good but i'm not doing it on this one that i then like either expanded upon or whatever and then i yeah everything else i mean i've been doing like i've been doing close to like an hour hour five on the road and doing like three minutes from the special that i'm probably going to do on late night to promote the special so i'm trying to keep that like fresh in my mind so i don't yeah. forget because everything else like i can't I, I can't even remember now like the old stuff the old stuff yeah oh, i can't I, remember how it goes someone said to me can you do the zip lining joke which I, yeah. i've done a million times yeah and i was like how does it start yeah and they're like when in doubt spread them out i go that's not how it starts yeah i go how does it start someone they had me they were yelling the pajamas joke the other night and i was uh -huh. like i was like i'll do it i have no problem i'm i'm, I'm i'll do it over time yeah. i have no problem so i start the pajamas joke and i'm like i don't i don't even know how it starts wow i like i couldn't but you forget them so quickly you do because you're so sick of it yeah and then and now i look at it and i was like i wrote this hour very very quick i yeah. wrote this hour in uh i retire i did my special uh, right before thanksgiving yeah so december january yeah i wrote this hour and it's but you started before you filmed the special. I started. I had a lot of stuff. I had a lot of stuff that I hadn't, that I had, I didn't. Some stuff I didn't put in the special. Some stuff I didn't know. It was already written. I just had not worked it out yes. on stage. And so, uh, how much did you save? That was like, these are jokes that work that are just not going in the special. But I'm going to save for the next hour that weren't like things you wrote 
in the last like four months? Uh, one probably one bit. Really? Yeah, one bit, and it was it's this. Uh, Is it long? It's yeah, they're all long. Well, so yeah. like some I someone said to me the other day, I was like, I have a new hour, and Shane Torres is like, well, technically, I have five new jokes, and I was <laughs> like, I was like, yeah, technically, but one bit was this. It was just too much. I always think that you can. I I have a lot of rules about comedy in my with for me, yeah. but one of them is once you start a subject, subject, finish that subject. Don't stay too long on that subject, and don't stay too long on that subject and tell the same story nine different ways. Yeah, like so for 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 me, I had this great story that about taking care of the girls by myself, mm-hmm. but that story I believed should be that story, and I was bleeding another story into it. Because I like the other story. And then I thought, no, nah, I think I should just get rid of that story. Save that for the next special. And and just tell that story. Just yeah. finish that story. And so I did that. I've done that a lot. where Especially with Alex. I, I would have so much material about her and Georgia. Um, bit uh, Stories about them. But they were all the same story. They were all like this story of them acting like idiots. Me being yeah. dumber. And Leanne be, you know, saving the day kind of thing. Yeah. And so, uh, so yeah, I have one bit from the old one. The Tinder thing I wrote a while back, but I'm gonna throw that in this weekend see if it yeah. works. Um, and then Isn't I just, that great when you go back through old stuff and you're like, oh, I can actually yeah. probably make that work. I just need some. I need some. I need to figure. See what I'm bad at. What you and Sam and and Ralphie was brilliant at was uh, getting the most out of that joke. Like mm. really making sure that you didn't leave any meat on the bones. Mm. Like getting it. Like. Uh, I'm a plate spinner. Like I spin plates and I let, and then they get to the place where the, I go, once it's up, we're good. Yeah. You know? So I just get to the thing. I'm like, all right, I got it. Next one. Yeah. Like I, I'm not good at like really sitting down and doing the long work. I That ends up coming out. I end up doing that like a month out from the special. Oh, interesting. I like get all the fucking things I like and then I whittle it down and then I go, all right, now let's fucking leave, yeah. trim it out. Yeah. Well, I mean, I had, I also had like, maybe the roughest summer ever so when i broke off my engagement it was a few weeks after i found out i got the special and that changed the special a lot obviously from like the opening joke is i got engaged to now we re i restructured the whole thing in like july and i shot it in november first week of november and then wrote I had some jokes that I had written about being engaged that I had to just lose, that I just lost. I didn't have them anymore. And then I had to write some new ones about calling mine off and then put that in the hour. So there were some jokes I was doing for like a couple months that went in the hour um, that were not going to be there. And then like I didn't do any jokes about him. I do I do jokes about calling off my engagement. I have no jokes about my ex in it. Really? At all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't do any of those. I did some on Conan while we were dating. Um, and they're good jokes and I they would have been in the special um if we had still been together but once we broke up i was like i i don't think i could say like my ex did this and that and like maybe i bring them back at some point maybe a couple of them but like i don't know i feel i just feel like those are dumb like they're out there somewhere it's fine and i have new jokes about that i mean i have like i have a whole bit on couples therapy now like all this stuff so it was definitely (laughs) fuck yeah worth it well congratulations <laughs> thank you you know i'm here for you i absolutely love you i would do thank anything you. for you you're one of my favorite comics to watch you really are mm-hmm. you always have been and i'm so excited for this special when's the theater tour i mean whenever are you gonna do one are you are you do they have they talked about it yet they've talked about it and they um let's see how this reception goes for this special it's kind of yeah there's i'm i'm uncomfortable right now because it's a lot of people going like telling me what's probably going to happen. And it's me going, you guys, I don't know if I can deliver on that. I've done everything I can, but it might not. I mean, I was talking to you about this before. Like mine is coming out in between. Like it's like Pete Davidson, me, Marin, you and Segura. Like who else is coming out in March? I think Dalia. Dalia. Like, yeah. So I'm, they're like, it's better because people will binge watch stand up specials. And I'm like, is that a thing? They're like, totally. I'm like, all right. Like, yeah. I don't know. No, I think I think I I personally I can watch a new special every single day. Yeah, I me can. too. But I'm you know. I mean, I I don't know what person can't enjoy a a, a new laugh. Right. I, I think That's it's a good point. I 
I will watch every single one of those ones you just said. Yeah. And I'll find ones online that I haven't watched before, and I'll watch and I'll get a giggle. Yeah. Like I, there's, I, 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 I love the math of it. I love the looking at it and seeing what people did differently and what they did. Oh, that's an interesting outfit yeah. choice. Like, oh, really? You're gonna talk about that first? Oh, yeah. Wow, you you went from this bit and then you left it and then you said another bit and then you came back to that bit. Like, that's interesting. Yeah. I, I, I have no problem watching comedy specials yeah and especially We're like studying them though yeah like I, yeah well it's 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 like why wouldn't you you know it's like are you going to be a musician and not listen to other music yeah might as well true. might as well hear what's out there right um i i i didn't and it goes back to that thing that we were saying earlier is that like i strive to write jokes people aren't writing yes. so like i'm not gonna exactly i'm not taking from anyone's material i would never do that and i and i definitely wouldn't wouldn't even like I don't even think I get inspiration. I get I'll tell you where I get inspiration. The number one inspiration that I got out of all the specials I've watched, probably one of my favorite jokes ever, is Dave Chappelle's kicker in the pussy. Right. And yeah. and, and I, I and I I I will say that I drew direct inspiration from that joke and to the joke that I am proudest of of mine because I thought sometimes I, I really thought this and i and i strove to do this and i hope i did this correctly or accurately you can't it you can challenge yourself to write differently than you've ever written yeah you can challenge yourself and if you're good enough you can pull it off yeah and and that kicker in the pussy joke was such a funny the the meat of it was so funny and just him expressing that he acted like he he's grew up in the hood he didn't grow up in the hood yeah. He had a white friend, is and the, the whole stuff, and then kicking the pussy, and then I, I, and and I had, had a conversation with Stanhope about Stanhope was uh, having a cocktail, writing a knock knock joke, mm -hmm. and he was like, "Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, we're as good as those guys, right? Like, we should be able to do that." Did yeah. you ever write? He goes, "Do you ever try to write like a guy walks into a bar joke?" And I went, "No," and then I went, "Hold on, though, I bet I could." Yeah. And so, and by the way, I, I didn't set out to write that joke, but when that joke showed up and I saw the structure, I went, oh, oh shit. Yeah. Oh, oh shit. I know. Oh God. And then, <laughs> and then that was the fucking, it was like, it was like, that's the inspiration I draw is I go, you're doing something out of the box. Uh, I'll tell you right now where my inspiration is. And we and you have talked about this, my inspiration right now, and I am not good at it and I'm not good at it because I fucked it up earlier and i thought i was so good at it that i needed to depart from it mm -hmm. was act outs yeah i'm i don't do act outs often right or i don't do them well i don't do them really like, i don't do them well right now i have a joke i'm literally i the first thing that popped in my head when you said that is the the zip lining thing taking yeah i guess back. i guess yeah, yeah I guess, i'm like yeah. that's a huge act out yeah yeah that's a, a big act out no but i have a bit right now where a great act out can drive this bit to the next level yeah and i'm like and so that's where i'm like and I, I use Burr as an example, but Bill Burr has consistently said, if you're not doing something new on your next special, if you're not trying something new or challenging yourself, then you're doing the same special you did last time. Yes. And that is not, and, that, and by the way, I'm trust me, I'm terrified that people are going to watch my special and go, go like, where's, how, where's his machine story? Oh. How come he doesn't have a crazy machine story? Uh. Like going like, why isn't he doing the same thing over and over and over again? Yeah. And my thing, my goal is, I, I think I got that in there, but I think I got other stuff in there that's also really, really good that I don't normally do that I think I did this better. I think yes. it's in my wheelhouse, but I think this is a better version of Bert. Yes. And so I think, you know, I think that's the, and we'll find out. People either like it or not like it. And then you go, oh, fuck it. Back to the drawing board. Did I ever tell you about the time? I <laughs> Yeah, I have a new joke, right? My newest joke that I'm working on right now is entirely an act out. And every time it works, I did it in the OR the other night and it worked. And I literally said to the audience, that's a new one. And thank you so much for laughing at it. Because if you hadn't, that is a big, that's a big commitment that could have gone real bad for me. Like, because if I, if nobody likes yeah. it, I just sang part of the national anthem you know like that's yeah. just like oh, very far to fall so i appreciate you coming with me on it uh and then another i was gonna say another reason to watch the people specials besides just being inspired is like to make sure you're not oh. telling any of the same jokes well i uh, there's a certain period like a month out i stopped watching everything because mm -hmm. i was like hey if 
if you got the same joke I have, I don't want to know about it. Oh, I don't okay. even want to fucking know about it because I will melt down. But I'd hope that Netflix would be give you a heads up. I don't know. I don't like, know hey. that people would know. I don't think people would no, I think, remember. I think, I think Netflix would, the people that watch them go, hey, just so you know. I think the best people are other comics. I think those are the people who are most aware of what else is going on. Yeah. Like if I have a joke, I'm like, have you heard anything like this? I run it past a few comics who still watch comedy. Because also if you run it past a comic who doesn't watch comedy anymore, they won't necessarily know. Because I think people have two approaches. They either like watch a lot of comedy to make sure they're not stepping on any toes or at least like the big ones that come out or they don't watch any because they don't want to absorb anything. And I feel like you kind of have to be in the middle because if you're not aware of what people are doing, I mean, Whitney did a guest spot on one of my shows in D.C. last year, like the night before hers, because there was like a similar reference. And I think Amy Schumer's newest one. And she's like, I just need to change the wording right here. And like, that's just everyone's that careful now. Oh, yeah. And it wasn't it wasn't even the same joke. It was just a like, she's like oh, I'm just going to change the reference. So there's what, like almost, no similarity at all. I almost texted a tell the other day about a joke. I wonder what the premise was. I just te almost texted him of like, hey, do you have any do you ever. No, I can't fucking find it. Yeah, I got it. Some of these jokes, now that I read this, I'm like, I don't know what I'm pushing away from. I have yeah. a joke about not wanting to listen to Leanne. That's, oh, really? That's why she talks to me when I take a shit because I can't leave. <laughs> and apparently my shitting face looks a lot like my listening face. All right. <laughs> the name of your special. Quarter Life Crisis. Streaming on Netflix now. Mm -hmm. Um, You're on tour. This is coming out. The Where are you first weekend of your special? Uh, Hilarities in Cleveland. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Great it's club. It's a great fucking club. Mm -hmm. I that is a, That's one of the best clubs in the world. Yeah. They're awesome. Yeah. And then yeah. Uh, where are you at after that? Uh, after that, oh gosh, I'd have to look, honestly. I don't know off the top of my head. I can look. Are you serious? Are you I not think a promo I'm, machine like me? I know. I suck, man. I'm like, I think I'm in La Jolla that month, which will be fun. Uh, I'm pulling, as I'm pulling up my. I'm pulling up your website. My right routing now. sheet. Let me throw on my fucking glasses. There's even all in there. Okay, here we go. March, I'm at Hilarities in Cleveland, and then I'm at the Comedy Store in La Jolla, the 19th through the 21st. I'm at Tacoma Comedy Club, the 26th through the 28th, and then uh, Albany, Irvine, Nashville, D.C. in April. So funny when when you search you under uh, on Google, it says people also search for. Do you know who? Who? Eliza Schlesinger. Oh, yeah? Nikki Glazer. Fred Savage. Oh, I did a show with him. That's why. Oh, for real? I was, yeah, I on his show, What Just Happened, I uh, they cast me as his co-host. Moses Storm. We were both on the Conan tour. Oh. That's brilliant. Sam Morrell. Mark Norman. And Those are just Michael all Richards. That's so comics. crazy. Oh, really? Yeah, why don't Michael Richards? That's... It's not my gorgeous. I was like, what? <laughs> Whitney Cummings. Doing a bit? <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing a little bit. <laughs> and strong, right? Oh, Close so strong. Good. Big hey. laugh. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. You're the best. Oh, I, I agree. <laughs>